What's going on, people? Welcome back to the Gooms Podcast. We have got a banger for you guys today. Before we get into it, make sure you hit that subscribe button as we are on the way to a thousand subscribers. Enjoy the episode. Peace. Shit makes me scared to have a girl, though. I got a girl, bro. Does these streets are bullshit, bro? Especially in Manchester. Oh, <laughs> bro, it's like, bro, it's look like at Steve Smith. Harvey's wife, bro. She bro. cheated on him, man. Steve Harvey as well, that fucking guy, big billionaire. It happens though. Crazy, bro. Bro, dating. He probably just wasn't hitting it right though. You know what? Even if you are, bro, like just women are nuts, bro. Curve doesn't have that issue, man. I don't think I got that issue. <laughs> no, I just think women are just wild, bro. They're just wild. Do you think men are wild though? It, work, it works both ways, bro. If you're a, no, good, if you're a good man, you're a good I'm, man. Yeah, if but like woman, I'm a guy, and so like I'm not dating men. So, <laughs> yeah. Like my opinion is women are mad. <laughs> and you know what it is? You see when you see, and like nothing I've said isn't from experience, bro. Like it's there's facts in every statement that I've got. That's you've, what makes it worse. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you've lived it, bro. You're a bit older than us, isn't it? Mm, Thirty-one. Shit. Don't look at them. No, no, I'll take it. It's funny because when I meet other thirty-year-olds, they're like, "Oh, how old are you? Like twenty-seven, thirty-one." Yeah, I'd like, say mid twenties. Mm, Give mid twenty that, vibes. Bro. Yeah, I'm doing alright, bro. But yeah, we're rolling. I looked, I was about to say some mad stuff and I looked, I saw the red light. Oh, <laughs> yeah, bro, bro, don't worry, man. Bro, we wouldn't be dirty yeah. like that, bro. Don't worry. I've got a brand to uphold. Wait, what mad stuff, bro? Oh, bro. Nah, <laughs> nah, nah, hold it, hold it. Can't Listen, H, bring the fucking people in, baby. Welcome back to the Goons Podcast, episode 33, man. We're back. We've got a special guest. First time meeting him, man. Seems nice. What's happening, bro? Like to introduce yourself? Yeah, man. I'm doing all right. My name's Kofi Josephs. Um, Professional basketball player, model, um, entrepreneur, mental health advocate. Mm. Tell Bro, them. I'm really sorry, but that was so quiet and it's not being picked oh, up. Oh, was it? Because the mic's a bit far from you. Yeah? You know just what? Like, Let me put a pillow behind me because I like to lean. And yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, shit. Your hip. What's wrong with your hip? I two hip surgeries, bro. Oh, shit. Mm. Still out of grinding. <sighs> nah, basketball. Two hip surgeries. Because you're so tall, though, is that, is that no, one of the that issues? I'm not that tall, bro. Well, you are compared to me, bro. Yeah, I know, but like, <laughs> I'm a, in a six different four. world. I'm huh? <laughs> six four. No, I'm six six. Six six. Yeah, but Same I'm like, height as Matthews. I'm in a different world, though. Like in my world, like in the basketball world, you've got man are like the shorter guys are six foot. Yeah. To me, you're a little guy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, Cheers, oh, I'm gonna post you up. <laughs> like you're small. But then I've got like seven footers, so I'm like actually in the middle. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm like yeah. the average height. So. Yeah, yeah. Two hip surgeries. Yeah. yeah, yeah. For the same thing. Same hip, tr- same injury. Mm. Even like Goggins. Bro. Shit. I shouldn't even be playing basketball still, bro. They, the doctor said you shouldn't be playing basketball. Quit. Retire. It wasn't like just stop playing. It was like retire, don't play anymore. And you need a third one. If you ever want to like be able to like bend down, pick up your kids, play with them. You're gonna have mad arthritis, and you're probably gonna need a hip replacement. So why do you still play? Because I was like, bear in mind when he told me this, I was like, I was like 20, 23. I've been playing since I was ten, so I was like twelve years, thirteen years. Deep. Don't know anything different, I think. Now, nah, but I was also like, I'm like six months away from turning pro now. If you're gonna tell me that, mm-hmm. tell me in year one. You get me? I'm not invested. Yeah. I've got, People talk about 10,000 hours. Bro, smash that. Like, smashed it. So now I'm six months away and you're telling me, it's oh, up. yeah, it's all over. I ain't even got to taste it yet. So when, when was this? I was like 23, 24. So like, I was like six, seven years ago. And what did turning pro mean then? Obviously, I'm not really the biggest basketball fan. So mm. when you say turning pro to me, my head goes straight away to the NBA. But I know obviously there's different levels to oh, that. Oh, there's loads of leagues around the world. But... um. It was like, I just finally got the opportunity to get paid to play basketball. Because obviously for me, I love traveling. Like, I love it. So that's been like my number one thing, which is get to see the world. And if I get to play basketball and do it too, amazing. And I get paid, you get me? And obviously it's different to being on holiday. Living in Spain is different to going to Madrid for five days. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So like, I'm more interested in living places learning the culture cultures yeah bro. yeah like there's something there's something about being around people and you don't know what they're saying do you know what i mean it can give you anxiety you like that 
don't get me wrong, it can give you anxiety, but yeah, depends on the situation. Yeah, it's like it's like <laughs> always being dropped in cold water. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you ever do you guys do like ice baths and that? Yeah, yeah I used to. We, we did the like in the winter time, and I, used to I remember I pulled up to because they have them at our gym, like we do like functional fitness. Mm. And I was bare ill one day. I was like, has to like I was aching everywhere. I was like, let me jump in the ice bath. Like, I'll be cool. Like, fuck it. It was like minus two. In what the was the first minute like? I'll tell you, thing I, ever, yeah, the, the first time I did it, it was the worst thing ever. But you just you were just bro. If you've got that mindset that you're gonna fucking do it, it's not that deep. That's the thing. You know so I mean? that, that first minute is like being dropped in cold water. Mm-hmm. Like when you're in a foreign country, you get off the plane, no one speaking English, and obviously we come from a certain country and vibe and culture where it's like I'm English or I speak English at least. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. everyone needs to be able to communicate with me. In these small countries or mm-hmm. whatever country, they don't, they don't give a fuck, bro. Yeah, <laughs> you know I mean, you're blessed if someone speaks English rather than <laughs> yeah. oh, you expect it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think when you leave your culture and where you're from, it just gives you a different like understanding of yeah, the yeah. world. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, man, like I got to experience that and I, I loved it. Yeah, bro. Let's um, let's bring it back and introduce yourself properly, man. Goons Podcast episode thirty three. Yes. Uh, so my name's Kofi Josephs, professional basketball player, um, model, big model. I'm doing all right. Mental health advocate <laughs> and uh, entrepreneur. Got a lot going on. Yeah, decent amount. Decent I didn't amount. even I didn't even know. I mean, you told me in the lift on the way up that you have your own your own businesses that I didn't know about. So can you actually tell me just so I've got an understanding yeah. and obviously the people listening as well, what it is that you do outside of modeling and, and obviously ball? So um, I've got a mental health uh, community company. Um, it's called Why Not I, CIC. And I've also got a clothing brand, which is like contemporary lifestyle, but it's about mental health as well. Is that what you're wearing now? No? Yeah, 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 yeah. So Same. most of the time I'm wearing my own stuff, but it's because... Mental health is super important to me. Do you know what I mean? Especially I just from the same logo on your hat as well. Yeah, bro. Like yeah, yeah. I am. Like you know what it is? Is it's the brand and what it stands for is me, mm-hmm. which is why I made it. Do you know what I mean? And it's a that's beautiful. Like I'm an embodiment of that. So when people are like, "Oh, I look up to you. Oh, you're so resilient. You're this. You're that." Even if it's just not even in basketball, if it's in modeling, if it's in anything I do, it's like. Why not I is that? Do you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. where where we come from, bro, like a lot of people, when I say a lot of people don't make it out, they don't really, especially if they've got dreams. Like most of them give up, can't be bothered, don't have what it takes, fuck it off. Like things get happen. Get distracted. Get distracted. So much happens. Um, and being like young black male, single parent household in a city, like the chances were even slimmer. Do you know what I mean? So, for me to be able to just make it out, I kind of had that why not me attitude, you know what I mean? And yeah. literally, I remember being like 10 or 11, and my teacher said to me, oh, what makes you think you can go to America? I was like, um... How, how like, counteractive is that, that a teacher is supposed to be showing you the world and, like... Bro, he did it in front of the whole bro. class, bro. And the thing is, he done it on purpose. Well. He done it on purpose, bro. That was the thing that jarred me, because I was like... I used to get in trouble all the time, not because I was a bad student, but because I was bored. So I understand teachers a lot better mm-hmm. now. Yeah. Because I've got friends who are teachers. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, gifted and talented for every single subject. I've done all the schoolwork. I've done the extra work and the extra, extra work. There's 15 minutes left of class. What 10 year old do you know that's in a classroom surrounded by his friends? He's just going to sit there quiet. None. Yeah. It's time for me to ramp and play with my friends. It's not <laughs> yeah. my fault they haven't done the work. Do you know what I mean? And if the teacher now hasn't given me something to keep me engaged, I'm just bored. Mm-hmm. So now teacher's saying, shut up, be quiet. Now I'm like, who are you talking to? Now I'm cheeky. Now I'm yeah, kicked yeah. out of class. So I'm in trouble. So um, when I fell in love with basketball, it was, I just want to do more of this. Like I'm loving it. And then obviously you get on Google that and you start typing in basketball first when it comes up to America I'm like oh I guess that's where I need to go then yeah I need to leave hands with <laughs> Aston I'm just gonna go America and then where one of my teachers said in front of the whole class he was like what makes you think you can make it in America crazy. but like you know yeah, when yeah. someone's asking you the edge of 10 as well bro that's crazy yeah like you know when someone's asking you but like they're actually asking you it's not like a question like one-sided where it's like, what makes you think you can go to America and you're not supposed to reply? It was, no, tell us 
what makes you think you can go to America? All the girls are in the class looking, all my friends are like, bro. Oh! Yeah, and then like, I'm, but like, I'm on the spot now. Yeah, and then yeah. I had to think, what actually makes me think I can go to America? Because yeah. remember, I'm just thinking of this dream. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going. Then I didn't even realize like, what actually makes me think I can go? And then my brain and like, I just felt tiny. And I was, something with me was just like, bro, it's now or never. Like you need to have a reason as to why you can go. Because if you don't, it's always going to be in the back of your mind. And then more than likely, you're not going to make it. Did you apply to a teacher or no? Yeah, I just said, why not? I was like, why not me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because bear in mind, every single day I'm going to um, the news agents and I'm reading, bear, bear in mind, it's like 2010, 2008, around then. I'm looking in the magazines. This is when like, every, you know, like Source, Vibe magazine or the hip hop mm -hmm. magazines. There's this basketball one called Slam. So I'm just looking at it every day. Bear in mind, it's £3.50. I'm like, I can't afford this, bro. Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, I'm just it. looking in the magazine. read it in the shop. <laughs> yeah, I'm just reading it in the shop. I'm cool with boss man, you get me? So yeah, he's yeah. like, yeah, do you think? Like, just put it back. I'm looking at it and I'm just seeing bare kids. Like, I'm like 10, 11, but I'm seeing like 16 year olds, 17 year olds, phenoms gonna make it. So I'm just like, they look like older versions of me. Mm. My brain's not like thinking they're in America because of this, because of that. They've been playing basketball their whole life. He's the son of an NBA player. Mm. Don't really care. I'm just like, oh, he looks like an older version of me. So I guess I can make it too. If he can, yeah. then I guess I can or why not? And it kind of left that little... That's quite special at that age though, bro. Chance. The thing like that. I had a sporting background before that though. So like... Remember, I'm in gifted and talented for every subject academically. I was a brown belt in Kung Fu and I swam for West Midlands at the time. Dope. And I was doing high jump as well. So my mum was just like, cause she's at work all the time. And in our community, like when you finish school at 3.30, till mum gets home at seven, free reign, you do what you want unless you're getting picked up. Do you know what I mean? So and that's where like, kids in that area Go into the bad things. Get yeah. me bare mischief. This and also I'm in clubs. Anything I'm interested in, everything. Sure, go do it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Your nan will pick you up. You go with your auntie or whatever. Like we'll figure it out rather than ask. Oh, so what did you do today when you finished school? Oh, I just hung out at the park. With who? Are oh, the older kids? My mom can't police that. What does that I mean? consist of? And then yeah. So now I'm like I'm knackered all the time. I'm coming in eight o'clock. Oh, I'm tired. Eat homework. Go in bed. Then I'm at school. Same thing next day. So. Um, I kind of already had that low-key mindset of why not me? And obviously my mom's a Christian, so it was always you're blessed and highly favoured. Do you know what I mean? So I was at the back of my mind of I'm blessed, but if I like something and I work hard too, then I might have a little bit of luck too. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, it was one of them. Can I ask you something, bro? Mm -hmm. I don't know. If you don't want to touch on it, you don't have to, but I know you said you got came from a single parent household yeah. and it was just you and your mom. What was that like growing up? It was good, you know. You know what? I'm obviously because of like the mental health stuff. Like I'm very open, especially with, like my public mm -hmm. speaking and stuff. So that's how you can connect to people. So growing up, it was nuts because where I'm from, it was more weird to me seeing a nuclear family, okay. aka like mum and dad, to like together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All my friends are oh, just their mums. I'm like, calm, it's whatever. My aunties, just mums. Do you know what saw, I mean? So I'm yeah. like, it's whatever. The only time that I saw like a two parent household is like my wife and kids and Fresh Prince. <laughs> yeah. My wife and kids. You get me. Up, by the way. My wife and kids and is like, so good, bro. And even like, there was a show called One on One. I don't know if you watched it on Trouble. And um, he was a single parent dad. Mm -hmm. So I just thought, I'm not going to be a girl when I'm older. I'm going to be a man. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be just like him. I never thought that there's a chance that I was gonna um, be in like a two parent household. So it was really like whatever, cause you don't really know any different and everyone around you is in the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Does so it make it was, you wanna be better? Uh, I don't know. It just made me, I just wanted, I just always wanted to be great. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I just, yeah. But I didn't realize that I had daddy issues until like I got older because like, Men telling me what to do. Nah. Woman, no problem. Because remember, I'm growing up around women. Yeah. I'm with my so mom. You auntie, found like mom. when men were telling you to do something, and the ego auntie. came in and the pride came in and you kind of- It wasn't even ego or pride. Crazy. It was just, nah. But my dad telling me what to do, bro, is I, 
I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was anti, like, you could be telling me, you could just like anything, you could be like, oh, just like, um, pick your clothes up off the floor. Nah, yeah. you talking to? Or it's like immediately, as soon as I hear the voice, the mess, the message is irrelevant. I'm like, nah, <laughs> don't care. My mom could be, or my auntie or my nan or whatever. I'm, I'm a lot more receptive because yes. I've grown up with them. And obviously they're my carers. Mm -hmm. So like they take care of me. There's no man doing it. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. the next time I interact with a man, he's telling me what to do, or he's telling me off. I don't think so, bro. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And when did you just, when did you find that? Was that like with coaches where you realized that you had that oh, issue? Oh, nah, I just found what? it like in school. Oh, okay. School was the first place, and it's funny because I used to hate basketball. Did the teacher that asked you the question was that a man? By the way, okay. Mm, fuck that. Just which is yeah. Now nah, you know what? I love that. I love because. Bear in mind, I'm 10. I came up with the idea of why not I, when I was like just about to graduate uni, like 23, 24. But I always had that little thing in the back of my mind of anytime like I'm going through something stressful, it's hard or whatever. I'm like, bro, why not? Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because then it does, it at least makes me try. Do you know what I mean? And when you try, you have a chance. Do you know what I mean? You might miss, but. Yeah, I guarantee if you don't shoot it, it ain't going to go in. Yeah, you like, miss every yeah. shot you don't take, bro. You get me? So I'll be, you see the way I play, I'll be pulling it. <laughs> so I'll just try and be like that in um in life. But yeah, man, like single parent household. Now I'm like, no way, it's not happening. Mm -hmm. Because I know what a two parent household can, can provide. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And it's super important in a child's upbringing. Do you feel like you missed out on having that strong masculine figure? No, because I had my uncles and stuff. Mm -hmm. And obviously I was running around the hood and I've got all yeah, my yeah, older yeah. friends and that. So I had a masculine presence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it necessarily the right ones? Don't know. But because I got into sports so early, them trying to teach me discipline was extremely hard for them. Mm -hmm. But because I was talented is why I didn't fuck it off. Yeah. Because I'm like, I'm too good. But so it's like, we can't cut him from the team. We need him, but he needs to be better mm -hmm. with his attitude and stuff because he actually has potential to go somewhere with this thing. And whether he likes it or not, certain ways he's going about things actually need curbing, which took a long time <laughs> and a lot of punishment. You, you, you were saying you didn't actually like basketball before we kind of like cut you up mm -hmm. and it changed. What, what were you going into? What, what changed that? So I was um, my best friend at the time, you know, he was like a year older than me or like six, seven months older than me, um, Reese, And he used to just do everything. So like after school, he'd be like, yo, let's go park. He'd have a football. I don't really like football. I can play football though mm. because I'm just out there playing. Next minute he'd have a basketball. Cool. Guess we're playing ball today after school. Have a skateboard. Cool. Whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I've done everything. Um, like I was ice skating yesterday. Like I'm an ice skater for like 15 saw. years. Like <laughs> people are like, what are you doing? I'm like, I skate, bro. Like skate, skate. Um, but with basketball, I weren't really that bothered. I went anti it, but I went, I want to do this. He quite liked it. And then, um, but he used to suffer from fits. He used to have like seizures and stuff. Shit. Mm, so we're like 10, 11. And he, like we used to be out playing. And obviously it's different now for young people. They're on their phones and they're chilling. Mm. Soon as school finishes, straight back to the crib, out the school clothes, playing out clothes, gone. Yo, Nan, can I have a pound? That's going to get you some crisps or tick tops or whatever. We're outside till the I street. Feel like we're probably the last generation for that. Mm. Yeah. You get me? We're playing Aki123. We're playing Kirby. We're playing Kirby in the, park. the game. Bro. You get me? We're going to the park and you know when you like, you get the swings and you flick it so we like wrap <laughs> at the top. <laughs> Doing all of that, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, phones. Yeah. I don't want a phone for you. Know what yeah. me? I'm outside. So we used to do like we used to be everywhere and he used to suffer from fits, bro. And like it was crazy because remember we're like 10, 11. So like we're playing and he's having a seizure. We were like, what like what made this happen? Mm -hmm. uh, bear in mind it's just us, there's like three, four of us. And it kept happening. Ambulance has to come, we're getting people coming, helping him. Um and it was quite traumatic because one minute you're having fun, next minute. He's foaming at the mouth and like people are running from, people are stopping their cars on the yeah, road. Like mad. what's wrong with him? Jumping out, calling ambulance, trying to help him. We're just like, uh, uh, uh. We're like, we need to, after a while, we were like, we need to run to his mom's, get him, like Reese is having a fit, blah, blah, blah. And then one time he was at home. I went by his house, like, oh, I can Reese come out. It's like, oh, now nah, he's in. 
I think his mom and sister must have went to the food shop or something. He was in a house, locked in the bathroom, had a seizure, hit his head, died. Fuck. Well, Sorry like, to like, hear, bro. I was like, not expecting I was that like, to come out. I was like 10, 11, <laughs> or maybe like 11, 1, and 12. And um, he loved basketball. And then like, I went to his funeral and like my mom, first time I saw dead body, my mom's like, do you want to go see your friend? I was like, why? Bear in mind, he's like Jamaican Indian. And also I don't know about death at this point. Mm-hmm. Do you know yeah, what I mean? At all. I, I think, don't think anyone in my life had died at that point. So I'm like- That's a crazy anything. young age to, to deal with something mm-hmm. like that. Though, for someone so close too. Yeah. I was like, raw. So I'm like, my mom's like, it's going to be the last time you're going to see him. I'm like, oh, all right, cool. So she's took me down there. I'm like, he's not, he's like, like what? But his hair still looked wet because he's Jamaican Indian. And like, I'm just like, he looks like how I saw him the other day, but he's not moving. Like, what's this process? Do you know what I mean? And he had a basketball in his casket, a basketball pillow. And that changed it. And I was kind of like, me and Reese used to play. He liked basketball. And then I actually forgot about it. And then... I had a mentor come into school and I used to get in trouble. I used to get kicked out of every single class to the point where class would start and it'd be like, Kofi, here's your work. Go down to the centre, do it because you're about to disrupt all 29 Everyone, kids. Everyone, yeah. Just go do your work and just hang out. If you want to, if you finish all your work and extra work in 20 minutes sure. and you want to do nothing for 25 minutes, that's cool. But all these other kids need to still learn. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right, cool, whatever. We got a mentor, mentor, Mr. Thompson, 6'5". I'm thinking... Yo, don't think I've always been this big either. I used to be like, I was like 5'8", till I was like 14, 15. And then by the summer I turned 16, I was like 6'3". So like, bro, I screwed like six, seven inches or whatever in like a summer. Everything hurt. I wanted to take me doctors. All did was eat, sleep, was mad. Met Mr. Thompson. He loved basketball. So I got kicked out of class one time. He gave me a basketball in the playground and he was like, just throw it. So I underarmed it. And it just went off the backboard and went in. But I was about to boot it over the fence because I was fuming. First shot went in. And then after that, he just started talking to me about, so what happened in class? Bear in mind, no one has ever asked me what's happened. If anything, it's, you've been kicked out. So you're in trouble. Do you know what I mean? It's like, rah, there's two sides to the story. I might have handled it wrong. Yeah. But I have a perspective too. Mm -hmm. He was like, oh, so what happened? I'm like, huh? Because normally it's, you don't care about what happened, but I'm telling you anyway, because I'm the bad kid. Do you know what I mean? And when he did that, I'm throwing it. He's like, keep throwing the ball. So I'm just aiming for the middle, throwing it's going in. He's passing it to me, throwing it's going in. Passing Still under arm. Yeah, bro. Just, oh, no, I'm, I, I don't have to play basketball. Yeah, you get yeah. me? I'm just aiming for the middle of the circle. I'm not far. I'm just right in front of it. And he was just like talking to me. And the way he had such a calm tone and presence, I didn't feel like my back was up. I didn't feel like I was in trouble. But as a mentor, it's not his place to determine if you're in trouble or not. Yeah, he wasn't there to discipline you. He was there to talk to you. Yeah, so I was just like, huh. And then I was like mad sketchy of him because I'm like, I shouldn't feel like this around you because you're a man and I'm anti you. Yeah. Get me? And he was a black male as well. And I was just like, this is different because you're not a family member either. You're not my uncle. Yeah. So I'm like, huh. And then every playtime now, he come out with a basketball and he pass it to me and he'd go from underarm to hold the ball like this. I see him around um, the hallways. He'd print off like facts about basketball players. Wow, man. And I had cane rolls at the time and um, I was small and he was like, there's this basketball player called Alan Iverson. He's quite edgy. He does his own thing. He's really good. He's small. Same um, trim as well, or no? Did he have the same trim at the time as well? Yeah, yeah, I had cane rolls as well. So did yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. So did he. So I was just like, he had tattoos as well. So I'm like, this guy just seems sick. And all the other NBA players, they were wearing like suits and he was wearing baggy clothes. This, that. And I'm just like, that's just different. And I'm like, he looks like the people I see in the hood. Mm. So I'm like, oh, so you're telling me there's people at the highest level in the world that look like people like me, dress like me, taught in the American version the same, yeah. authentically himself. And he's still really good and he can make it. Oh, so now in playtime, I don't want to kick ball or just mess around or whatever. I'm like, yo, Mr. Thompson, we're going out. No one else played basketball either. So I'm just literally getting one-on-one stuff. And then... Sounds like a fucking movie, bro. Yeah, so, my basketball career kind Isn't of that crazy though, how one 
teacher had one effect on you and obviously not a teacher but a mentor had the complete opposite effect on you like why why are you going to go to america and the other guy gave you everything that you wanted which was you just someone to talk team. to you got me my first team i'm talking he researched young ba- basketball teams in the area then told my mom about it and at my very first session met me and my mom at the session and introduced me to the coach that's and fucking then, dope that is Mr. Yeah, Thompson's bro. Mr. Thompson is, is him, to him since, yeah, 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 I have, you know. He said he saw me, um, I went to the Commonwealth Games with England and I was all over like TV and BBC and that. And he said he saw me and he was like, I oh, young that young man. And he still works in the hood now. And like he uses me as an example for like a lot That's of That's amazing, kids. man. Mr. Thompson's him, bro. Yeah, sure. yeah he is. You know. <laughs> and it's <laughs> mad because you know what I said sick. to him? You know what I said to him? I said, I was saying, I text him because he like got my number. My mum must have saw him. And then he got my number. And then I told him, I was like, you don't know how much people actually know of you. You have no idea. Because I've been telling that same story from when I was like 10, 11. Like, cause he's f- not because of the basketball, but because he's like the first male I was cool with that wasn't family, which is actually more important to me. Yeah. Then the basketball is like, obviously I've reached where I've reached. And he's come with me the whole way. So it's just amazing, man. That is pretty dope, bro. Mm. That is pretty dope. Um, you said that mental health is really important to you, mm. hence why you started, obviously, the business. Why is it important to you? Have you been through some shit? <laughs> yes. Can you tell me about some shit that you've been through? Bro, mad. Just been through a lot, bro. So, I got a psychology degree. So, Dope. I'm super, like, I mean, I care about it from the academic side, but, like, the life side as well. But, you know, what I didn't realise is becoming a professional athlete, the mental stress, oh my God. I Because remember, when you've got a dream, you don't think of it in realistic terms. You think of it as a dream. You don't think anything is going to go wrong. It's a dream. That's why it's a dream. Just Everything's in the perfect. glory, all of, in all of its glory. Oh my, the reason why most people quit stuff is because they've got a dream and then life hits them in the mouth it doesn't mean it's still not your dream people think that it's like one like if you had a graph like people think it's one straight line oh. but it's, it's up down like you're going all the way yeah, back all down, the way bro. down. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what, what it is all, bro yeah but you know what's funny people will read books and watch movies and be like oh i love this until it's them that's when they're on the down mm-hmm. like oh this ain't for me yeah. it's like but you loved it when it was him the best part of the story bro yeah i know that climb back up it's the hero's journey isn't it mm. but um yeah bro bare mental health i'm talking one of the first things Bear in mind, I've represented England and Great Britain now. I've never played for my region, West Midlands. That was one of the first knocks for me. I was like, am I going to go to America if I can't even make the West Midlands team? Yeah. Bear in mind, I thought I was one of the best players in the country. Stress. But um, I think one of the, the, the first real keys other than Reese that like battered my mental health, which even I still take to this day, but I can manage it better now, is when um, my dad got murdered. Shit. Bro, yo, wild. I'm talking. So I'm like 17, 18. And I've been working my ass off to get to America. I'm talking. Like in the rain, I'm out there hooping. I got my headphones, like my hood up. Because I'm like, that's the fantasy. I'm like, I'm going to make it. Go mode. These are the days that's going to, you he's, know what I mean? He's in like Creed. Yeah, yeah, like Creed. You know when <laughs> he's just running. Say, he's in his Rocky he's montage, just, bro. You get me? I'm like. His very own Rocky But montage. you know what's different is. Them days, I had like a Nokia 3210, bro. Like, I'm not documenting nothing. Yeah, you get yeah. me? So I'm like, you know how a lot of people do stuff so they can show it? I'm doing it because I'm trying to make it. Mm-hmm. You get me? No one's seeing it. Like, I'm just out there. You get me? I'm like, these extra thousand shots. And remember, there's no DVDs or uh, like iPhones. I'm staying up late night. I'm going to bed. Then my mom's sleeping. I'm sneaking downstairs to record NBA at 2 a.m on channel five and then I'm like watching the game like in the day and I'm talking for me to watch a clip 15 times like a reel I've got to watch it rewind play watch it rewind play I'm there for like two hours what breaking down film and I didn't yeah. even realize what I was actually doing that yeah. was the habits that created like a monster do you know what I mean of mm. obsession because that's how you get better repetition um so I'd bust in my ass finally got an American scholarship ready to go. Bear in mind my relationship with my dad at this point. Once I got good at basketball is when I started hearing from him. Do you know what I mean? Before that, 
Nah, I might get like 20 pounds, like randomly in a letter in a year. So your mum and dad weren't together before? No, no, no. Single, single parent yeah, house. Yeah, yeah. But so he, like, was, he was still around to no, an extent. He lived in like London, Jamaica. So like, I didn't see him. Yeah. Get me? And like, we're at this age now. Your kids are expensive, bro. I ain't got any. Mm -hmm. So my friends do. I'm like, yo, what would 20 pound do for a Bro, we spoke about this kids? on the pod, bro. The average price for a kid is 150 to 200 grand, bro. Bro, from so zero crazy to 18 that is. So when, you, when I deep it now, I'm like, no wonder my mom's fuming when a little 20 pound comes and I'm gassed. Yeah. Because I'm like, yo, I got 20 pound. I'm about to go <laughs> Mackies. I'm about to, yo, yeah. yo. Yeah, you was happy with Nana's one pound, didn't it? You get me. So now I got 20. I'm thinking, yo. My mom's thinking, <laughs> out. do you know how much it takes to, to take care of you? Mm. Do you know how much you eat? Clothes. <laughs> You're out here playing basketball in your school uniform. Mate, school uniform's bread. You get me? I'm not deep in all that at that age. And then be like, we kind of fell out, me and him. But we weren't really cool. But then he tried that whole, I'm your dad. I mean, huh? The kid you remember was a little kid. I'm like 16, 17 now. And when you grow up in certain environments, a 16, 17 year old ain't a 16, 17 year old. Hey, Mentally, I'm like 20, 21, yeah, bro. Yeah. Like, we're getting into it with grown men on the street. You get me? And you think you can come chat to me as a as a stranger on some, you need to do this. Shut up, bruv. Yeah. And obviously he's on some, I'm your dad. I'm like, don't try it. So finally- Got the scholarship. Got the scholarship. Um, me and him are kind of cool. And just before I left London, so me and my mom at the embassy and my mom's like, she hasn't told me, bear in mind she's been communicating with him. She's like, oh, your dad's around. He wants to see ya. Gone, what I saw my man in probably like 10 years. What do you mean? He wants to see me. Where's like, how do you know? You know what I mean? I'm like, it's me and you against the world. Why are you communicating with the ops? Yeah, you get me. I <laughs> yeah. thought we weren't cool with him, so I'm not cool with him. Also, I don't need him now, yeah. respectfully. You get me. Yeah. I know how to make money in my own ways if I need to. I don't need you, and I'm leaving to go to America, so it's whatever. Um, yeah, you're on your grown man, shit. yeah, you get me. I'm like, whatever, bro, and then um. I'm like, you know what? I'll try and be mature. Cool, I'll see him. He's calm. It's been quite cool. Bear in mind, so how big I am now. I'm like six four. You get me? I'm grown. I'm skinny, but I'm 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 grown. Um, and we're talking, and he's tried to give me his chain, and I'm like, nah, nah, I'm cool. Don't wear him. And he's like giving me his ring off his hand, and I was just like, I don't want it. And he's like, put it in my pocket. No, he gave it to my mum. So I'm like, alright, cool. Took a picture with him. Even like some days, like I get, you know, on iPhone, you get memories. It'll pop up like the photo and I'll look and I'll just look at it and I'm like, probably look at your face, bro. You didn't know. That was the last time you could see him. I flew to America. Uh, my, well, my flight to America was probably like a week later, like five days. So I'm sitting, it's like 2 a.m. now. Me and my mom are getting ready to go to America. Bear in mind, I'm nervous as hell. You get me? I'm about to like, 3,000 miles away. Never really done it. And I'm, I'm going, jump, get me, and I'm going on my dream. I'm going by myself. No one's coming. And the thing that gave me so much anxiety about that is everyone's like, ah, oh, Kofi's going to make it. He's going to go. So that pressure of, I've got to go and do things. Two, I've talked about this for so long. So now I can't back out of it. Flights are booked, scholarship, everything's covered. You're going, bro. And it's hard to like be fully excited because I'm like, I'm leaving Nando's. I'm leaving Cinema. I'm Until leaving Nando's. Nando's. Bear in mind, at this time, I'm wearing Adidas PTs. You remember them? Nah. Oh, bro. Adidas you bro, man, you, man, you, man, you got 10 years guy. on us, bro. Yeah, I know. So are I'm they like, like the waterproof ones, though? <laughs> you, know, you know, like the baggy waterproof. Nah, these sets. are like, if people know, you know about the Adidas PTs, if you're like my age. You know, like the Air Max, like 95s and 110s. Yeah, 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 of course. I'm wearing them. You get me? Like, that's my culture. I'm like, I'm mm. going to America. Dropped in, that's going to be dropped in cold water, but I'm on... All my clothes are that, so I'm going there and I'm English, me. Yeah. I'm not doing the American accent. I'm not doing it. Like, just go and own it. This is what you get me. Yeah. But it's, it's different when 99.9% .9 of everyone you interact with is American and you're you. You've got to like stay strong. So I'm sitting on my suitcase. It's 2 a.m. My mom's like, all right, cool. The taxi's coming. I'm like, all right, bless. I'm trying to hype myself up. I'm looking around my room, just like, you ain't going to see this for a while. Also, in the back of my mind, I'm like, once I go to America and go to high school, the next step from there is university. The next step from there is going pro. You're never really moving back here, bro. Like yeah. this is kind of it. Your life's about to be a whole new world. When you come back here, it's to visit in the summer 
if you do, then you're leaving again. So like, really take this shit in. Brains on overload. Mum comes up. I'm thinking, boom, taxi's here. I'm like, oh, all right, cool. She's like, um, I got something to tell you. I'm like, shit, not now. I'm like, all right, what? I'm thinking something. To, I'm like, is my flight cancelled? Like, yeah. so have my coach said something? She's like, nah, sit down. I'm like, I'm sitting on my suitcase because it's overweight. You get me? I'm trying to like, mm -hmm. whatever, I'm sitting on it. And she's like, um, yeah, I just want to let you know, like, uh, your dad's been murdered. What? I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, bear in mind, my brain's like, yo, I saw him five days ago and I weren't really cool with him. Now it's like, yeah, he's murdered. So in my head, I'm like, so I'm wrong. I'm never going to see him again. I'm like, all right, cool. But I've got letters from him that, has, that it's like, now you're a bit older. We can have certain conversations. Do you know what I mean? That as a grown man, you probably can't have with like a 10 year old or but you never, old. you never had them then, but you've seen them now. No, I had the letters, but oh, remember, right. I'm not trying to read that shit. Yeah. You get me? I'm like, you're an up, bro. What do you mean you want to sit down with me and talk to me about why me and your mom didn't work out, why I went around this, that, and the other? I'm like, bro, fuck you, fam. You get me? I'm going to America. I'm going to show you that of all your kids, I'm going to be the best one. That's what I'm on. You get me? Yeah, yeah. Then it's, yeah, he's been murdered. Um, how do you feel? I'm like, what? What do you mean? How do I feel? You told me two seconds ago for a start. Don't know. Yeah. Also, I'm about to go to America. Taxi's coming. Then she's like, what do you want to do? What do you mean? What do I want to <laughs> do? I'm yeah. like, brain was gone. So I was just like, I guess I'm still going because I don't have enough time to actually process what's going on. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm going to need like a long period of time now where if I actually don't move and like stay in Brom, I'm losing that scholarship. All the work I put in for basketball, the flight money, everything, visas, all that, that's going to be gone. And then I still don't know how I'm going to feel when it's processed. I might, what if I still want to go to America and opportunity is gone? Bro, what the fuck was that plane journey like? What was that oh, like? Oh, bro. The, you know what broke me, bro? On your own as well? Are you still 17 at this age? At yeah, this point, I've yeah? gone down to London with my mum now. So right. we've, we've got like the National Express coach. We've gone down. Bear in mind, bro, it's an early flight. So like I'm traveling through the night, so I'm knackered. Can't sleep. But I've also got anxiety because I'm nervous as well. Do you know what I mean? Bear, then it's going to America. I don't know how it's going to be. Who am I going to live with? What's the view going to be like if it starts going pear-shaped? I'm not in Southampton. I've got to fly back. Like, you know what I mean? I've got to really commit to coming home if shit goes pear-shaped. Mm -hmm. Also, if things start going pear-shaped, bro, before you can fly home, you've got to deal with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm like, fuck, going down. I'm knackered. Now i got to say bye to my mom. Bro, the way I teared up. Because remember, it's me and her, bro. To the point where it's me and her on a level of I'm going to go deal with what I need to go deal with. But are you okay? Because in the house, it's just two of us. Yeah, You get me? Like, she's going to walk around the house and be used to me being there. Been there like 17 years. Do you know what I mean? Like, mom, how are you going to feel? You get me? So all that's now in my mind. I'm saying bye to her. She's trying not to cry because she's so supportive. She's trying but to she's be also strong. Like, I'm, I'm to... losing my baby. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's funny because like, obviously years and years go by, but when I come home, she gets to do her mother thing. Do you know how like, if some people like leave home at like 24 or 25 or whatever, like they get to baby them. My level of relationship with her from there is Skype calls, phone calls. You get me? If I'm screwing, she's getting a phone call at 2 a.m. because I'm fuming. She might be in bed, phone rings, I'm on smoke. Coming home. I'm just trying to let you know I'm booking the flight. So when I turn up at the house, I don't want to hear nothing. She's just like, wait, coffee, what, what, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and then it's calm down. So I'm calm down. Bear in yeah. mind now, I'm not, I'm deepening it now, but she's putting down the phone at like, after talking me down. Now she's got working like four hours, but she's got anxiety because she doesn't actually know my life and what I'm experiencing. Mm -hmm. So I've left her, I'm tearing up. But like, I haven't, can't really like process my emotions because I've got to get through the airport. I've got to get through security. No one cares about anything. They're like, yo, shoes and socks off. Not shoes and socks, like shoes and socks, like empty bags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, can you take everything out? Uh, yep, your bag, yep, can we check it? 
bear in mind, I'm like, yo, I just left my mum. Do you know what I mean? For the first time, don't know what life's going to be. And then, yeah, that flight, bro. Myth. Absolute myth. In your own long head. as well. I just, I just sat by the window. I just looked out the window. Just looked out the window. I was zoned. Absolutely zoned. I didn't even know what, I don't even know what I thought about. Because there was so much going on in my brain. Blank. Like, I couldn't think about everything all at once because I was mentally exhausted. And then when I landed, they sent my bags to the wrong airport. So when I actually landed, I got picked up by my coach. I had no luggage, no nothing. For like a week. So the coach had to take me to like buy clothes. I'm wearing team sweats, this, that, and the other. Mad. And I landed late. And um, her school next day. How long, how long were you in America for? Uh, six years. Shit. Mm. That so was like that's like the first bits of madness. The hip surgeries. Oh, bro, I wanted to fucking end it all. The hip surgeries was was that was probably the worst time of my life. Defo. Why? Because it held you back. No, because I feel like even mentally that take a take. No, a it was more. It was more so mental because obviously mentally, the body just follows what's going on in mm-hmm. your head. So, as men, yeah. We think everything is a joke because we're not taught to handle our emotions. Yeah, yeah, you get me. That's why, like, so, like, if you break, if you're, if you're, if you're just doing your thing and you break your leg, and you talk and you send and like demand them in a group chat, find out banter. Yeah. Bear in mind, emotionally, you're like, bro, my leg's broken, bro. I'm upset about this and it hurts. They're putting gifts of someone in a wheelchair yeah, with one leg. Everything, shit. bro, everything's banter, bro. But you're just thinking. Someone in a wheelchair like that, good, the gifts are coming in. Like. You get me? To the point where like, it might, it might lighten the mood, but if you're actually in a dark place, that shit's worse because you're even more isolated mm. than you was because physically you, you, you're done. You get so me? I know exactly how a phone call would go. I'd be like, bro, stop being a bitch, man. Go to the gym. You get me? Like, <laughs> yeah, bro, actually. respectfully, fam. <laughs> fuck you, bro. I'm not trying to hear that. You get me? Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. not, like, at times that's helpful, but realistically, it's oh. not that constructive. You get me? And bear in mind, I've had two, I've had, a, my first hip surgery was massive. And remember, I've got my American friends, but they're not my friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My friends are 3,000 miles away. I'm checking the group chat. Them man are all together going out, doing this, that, and the other. My birthday is in September. I'm I'm in school in America. Everyone else is living life. Um, Christmas. I'm not flying home. I got games and shit on Christmas Day. I'm hanging out. I'm in airports, flying around. You get me. New Year's. Everyone's turning up. But that was the, that was the dream, though, right? You see, you see, when I talk to these young kids and they're ah, cool, I want to go to America. I'm like, yeah. When's your birthday? Like, oh, October. I'm like, oh, what'd you do for your birthday? Like, yo, I go out with the man there. I have fun. I'm this and that with my girl. Yeah. What, well, Christmas? Oh, we have a huge family Christmas. We ever miss one? Never. All right, cool. Scrap both of them for your dream. You ready to do it? Oh, 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 oh. Something as small as, I don't know. What's your favorite food? Oh, yeah, I love to go Nando's. All right, cool. Scrap that. Go find a new favorite food, an American one. Oh, but now I like English food. Oh, right. But you want to go America on scholarship for four years. You're not, you're not thinking. Did, did you like it or not? I like the first two years, bro. Oh, I was anti. I was okay. anti, bro. But like America's my second home. Like yeah, yeah. I learned to love it. But like growing pains for being stubborn. But yeah, with the group chat, bro. The man and them are bantering everything. I'm also missing them. I'm missing my friends. Everything's just business in America. It's... I'm on scholarship so that you're very valuable because we're paying for you to be here. You can't be injured. And obviously being hurt is long. And I had a coach who was just a tyrant, bro. He was telling me I weren't hurt. My hips like cracked. My labrum's shredded. Like cartilage is done. I can't walk. I'm breaking into the training room at like, so I'm going into the training room because it closes at like 8 p.m. I'm going into the training room in the day. I'm going to the back door. I'm putting a little stone so the back door doesn't close. They think it's closed, but it's not. I'm having to go back in there at like midnight. Ice baths. I'm doing my homework in the ice baths, bro. Just so I can walk and that the next day. I got my coach telling me, oh, if you can't practice, I'm sending you back to England. I'm like, what about my degree? I'm about to be the first person in my family to graduate. And you're talking about sending me home. I'm halfway through it. Also, you're going to send me home as damaged goods. What? 
mad, bro. It was just so much stress. And because you're the only one living it, like, what's my mum going to do, bro? bro? That's crazy that your coach had it on you just to be like... Oh, bro, we didn't give that's a crazy, shit, bro. He bro. was mad, bro, to the point where, yo... The, it's like you're a puppet, to, really, bro, bro. I was ready to bang him out so many times, bro. <laughs> I'm hot-headed as it is, but, bro, like, our teammates been, like, like dragged me away because there's times I just had to stick it on him, bro. And the thing was, like, I was one of the best players in the league, but basketball was just miserable. I hated it. I don't know if I had the wrong mindset or not, but I had a broken hip. And he told me it went broken, so I was being soft. I'm overdosing on paracetamol, I'm overdosing on ibuprofen. My back's breaking out in hives and that. Bro, it was crazy. I went um, went to get a uh, cortisone shot in my hip. The doctor's trying to put the cortisone into my hip because it's not like it's in the socket. It's all the way in there. And as you guys can see, you need your hips for everything, bro. You can stand up, run, sit down, yeah. bend over. Hips. It's fucked. The nurse is trying. The nurse is holding my leg above her shoulder while the doctor's got the needle trying to push the like the syringe and all the stuff into my hip, bro. It's not going in. I'm looking at him thinking, is there a problem? He's like, yeah, your hips that messed up. The the dye's not going in. He's pulling it out. The needle's like this big. I'm like, huh? Then uh, go in there again. The nurse is holding my leg. She's having to move my leg around while he's got the needle in there just so it can free up space so it can go in there. Crazy. Then I'm going back to school and my coach is telling me I'm soft. That there's nothing wrong with your hip. I'm like, bro. Yeah, I would have wanted to bang him as well, bro. I'm like, bro, look at the, I'm like, look at the, look, look at the x-ray, bro. Like, I'm like, that's not feelings, that's facts. We're not having it, bro. And then when I had hip surgery, bro, now it's 10 months rehab. I'm talking for like, a month, I can barely get out of bed, bro. But remember, I'm having surgery during the school year. If you don't turn up to class, you don't find out what's going to be on the tests and the paper. Like, I'm still having to go to school. You get me? I'm on crutches. I'm going to the cafeteria. None of my teammates are there because they're in practice. If there's no one in there, bro, and I'm talking, this is how lonely I felt, bro. Because people are watching me doing single leg RDLs pushing my, my tray across the fucking cafeteria because I can't slide it with one crush, crutch because the food's going to go everywhere. So I'm having to do an RDL and slide it, lift back up, crutch, RDL, slide it. And no one's even coming. No one's helping, bro. And I'm looking around and I'm thinking, I should bang all of you because <laughs> me personally, if I see someone <laughs> yeah, you got on help, crutches, yeah, that's yeah, fucked, yeah. bro. Yo, what are you doing here? Let me carry it for you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I was just like, bro... This is wild. The Americans are built different, bro. Yeah, bro. I wanted to bang bear for them, bear for them, bro. Fast forward, bro. Where did you get to in America with basketball? Graduated. Uh, I was one of the best players in my conference, and then I ended up turning pro. Mm. In the NBA? No. Nah. No. Two hip surgeries, red flag. Okay. So no one wanted to oh, take Oh, shit. You. So oh, look at what I was talking about, that was the first hip surgery. So then I did 10 months getting back. I'm talking, I was in the swimming pool at like 6 a.m. with my trainers, getting ready, then going to class. Then in the breaks between class, we're in the gym. Then right back to class. Then when the team's got practice, I'm lifting again. Did that for like 10 months. Then got back playing. Felt great. Felt amazing. Bear in mind, I'm having to trust my body again. I was scared to like touch the ceiling, bro. Because I'm like, oh, if I land, is my hip going to break? Yeah. Finally got past that. Played for like two months. New season. <laughs> tore my hip again. Tore all the uh, um, ligaments, all that in my hip. 10 months out again. Had to do the same thing. So by the time I had the second one, oh, bro, I'm ready to just give up on life. So you've actually missed out on two years of playing as well, which effectively is oh, going to yeah. grow your game. Oh, yeah, 100%. And then, yeah, when it was time to turn pro, there people were like, are we really going to invest in him? Because he, why have he breaks again? And it's not like, oh, it's like a calf or whatever. It's his hips, which you hmm. need. Yeah, the like, third, I think the third one is like, and it's to strike out as well. You as get well. me. And just before I um, turned pro, the doctor said to me, because I was like, yo, my hip's hurting a little bit. Can I just get it looked at before I leave? And he had, a, had an x-ray and that. He was like, yeah, you tore your hip again. I was like, what? He was like, yeah, you Crazy. tore it again. So you're probably going to need another surgery. And uh, yeah, you shouldn't play again after this. You're probably going to need a hip replacement. And uh, if you ever want to bend down and play with your kids, don't play anymore. I was like crying, bro, right there. Because remember, I've already done two years. I'm like, I am just being robbed and the amount of work I put in. I'm talking, I used to like be on the court. I used to hide in the locker room after games and just wait for the court to be cleared of fans. And me and the janitor would just be there. The janitor would be cleaning up popcorn and shit. I'd be on a shooting machine just shooting. 
one in the morning, everyone else has that like, parties and that, and I'll just be there because I'm like depressed as fuck. And I'm like, I need to do this because I need to make it. Need to make it. Oh yeah. To make all of it kind of worth it. Because mm. remember, I'm like so invested in it. Like, bro, I'm on the other side of the world, bro. What? I ain't saw my family and reading my friends and that. Like everyone's just growing up. But the thing is, when you leave and everyone's still together, they're growing up together. So when I'm coming back each year, I'm more and more of a stranger. Yeah. You get me? And it's like, they're laughing at stuff. They've got photos and memories at Christmas together. I'm not experiencing none of that. I'm hella invested in this. So I can't go back. I just got to triple down and just keep it rolling. But it's taught me so much. And that's where the mental health stuff comes in because I know it from the athlete side. I know it from the education side. And the thing with the education side is, whilst I was going through depression and anxiety and all that, I know exactly what's happening. It's not even like I was clueless. I knew what was happening, bro, because I'm studying it. But could I get out of it? Nah. And that's when I was like, raw. I'm actually quite passionate about this because just because you studied up on it doesn't mean, oh, like two or two equals four. So, yep, I'll sort it. Nah, don't work like that. Is it a charity you got? Uh, it's a community interest company. When did that Pretty start? Much. It's just been vibes for years in terms of me, just like helping people, doing public speaking, um, running camps, just everything. But now I've actually got it more streamlined yeah, in like yeah. how I can actually really help people. So now I do stuff like the NHS, Greater Manchester Police, um, Commonwealth Games, uh, businesses. What do you mean, like what you're doing for like the police or like the NHS? Or they want to collaborate and we do like partnerships okay. in terms for like supporting mental health. Sick, bro. Because I do it in a different way. Like, what the? Yeah, I was gonna say. People, when people look at me, they're not like, are oh, you, what What do you know about mental health? Because they think I'm like, what the fuck, I've been through some shit. You get me? <laughs> yeah. But like, I'm here to help and yeah. like, when you've got like a middle class, middle aged white guy and he goes into the hood, ain't no one there trying to hear what you have to say about mental health, bro. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But then they can relate to me. Do yeah. you know what I mean? And I'm still giving the same message. Mm. So um, I take pride in that, man. Yeah, I'll take no, pride well done, bro. Yeah, no, Genuinely that's dope, bro. Like, appreciate it, bro. I want to ask something, bro. Obviously, mm. you've just basically sat down and broken down all of the shit that you've been through, which mm. has created the man that you are today. Mm. If you could go back, would you do that America again? Would you make that jump again? Would you sacrifice those relationships again? Would you put yourself through the strain, the hips through the strain, to know that your dream of the NBA maybe wasn't actually achievable because of certain things that happened? Would you go back and do things differently? Now, no. I don't know why, because I played with NBA guys and hold my own so I'm like right. I don't doubt that yeah I'm no, just saying like, for your personal outcome now that's why I wouldn't because but would you still be on the same path and where you are no, today I wouldn't. because the reason like I did psychology just because I like the way people think that's the what reason I did why that for I'm one on year. mental health and I'd use what I've learned and everything in mental health because of what I've been through not because of my degree mm-hmm. you get me like I was in hell with it you get me so like when I'm communicating, I'm talking to people and trying to help their mental health, they're like, yeah, he gets it. You know what I mean? It's not like, oh, he read it in a textbook about stress or ADHD or whatever. Nah, he's lived it. And do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it like, comes back to that relatability thing. Yeah, it? and that relatability, like, and I've lived in eight countries, bro. And you can literally drop me in any country. Like I was in Saudi, last country I was in. I remember Never you been to the Middle East in my life fit in calm because I've been in seven other countries maybe at times where I didn't even want to be there but I had to adapt do you know what I mean and them that kind of, of yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and them experiences after a while I'm now I'm just comfy you get me and like even with modeling bro modeling was was bad bro do you know what I mean and to be able to do that now the fact I left basketball and was able to do modeling I'm doing as well as I am now why can't I just jump in any career and do well? What's do you know next? What I mean? My business and my clothing brand. But the priority. Yeah, and I'm still a professional athlete. I'm yeah, yeah. Full time model. What's it like, bro, being a professional athlete, man? That's dope to me. I I, I love training, bro. I, I could genuinely just train every day. It, you know what? I haven't signed to a team yet, but I still work out like three, four hours a day. Yeah, standard. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mo- it's like, 
a lot of people are driven by the outcome. You know, when you're a true professional, it's the journey, bro. the journey, the yeah, process, yeah, yeah, like yeah. I just enjoy getting better than I was. It's not about playing for a team and just doing that there or the results, but like, do you, are you, do you care about the details? Because you can get a lot of the time, if you're really good, you can get by without focusing on the details just because you're more talented than the person you're playing against. But like, for you to spend time when you could be doing other stuff. It can be great. Yeah, like that, like it's such a great feeling. But it's so easy, bro, for, it doesn't matter what you're doing with you, just training for the fun of it or like you're like a pro athlete. It's so easy just to sit down and do nothing, bro. Oh, like putting in those fucking hours, man, getting up and just getting after it, bro. That's part of it. And that's fun. Mm -hmm. Are you tired? And I I, I, I say this, bro, like there's just something so like so enjoyable about going through something so adverse and then Mm. coming out the other side and you're just better. doesn't matter what it is, especially fitness though. Like it's satisfying, bro. It's, it's, it's earning it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like fucking grit, bro. You can't, like there's no, there's no way through, but through. Do you know what I mean? Like, you ain't gonna be a bitch and give up either. Yeah, do you Can't know what I mean? Be. And even if, even if it's really hard, like, bro, like, some days are better than others. Like today, bro, I'm still feeling bank holiday, where I'm like, ah, you know, I could just chill, rest another like two days till I feel fresh. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. nah, let's go today. And then I'm like, today, Cole, bro, you're not as sharp as you was like before you had like before you had when a little bender. And I'm like, but that's okay. Let's do the best we can do today. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Instead of copping out and being like, oh, I'll just come back when I'm fresh. Because like if we only wait for ideas, like for situations to be ideal, you probably will get nowhere. Such a misconception with the grind, bro, that you wake up every day and it's like- You're you, amazing. Yeah, 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 bro, you're your Literally. best every day. It's like today <laughs> I'm going to sit down and get everything that I need to get done. Some days you wake up, bro, and you don't want to fucking do it. And it's like- you know what? My body don't feel good today. Mm. Just that that run ain't going to work out. That gym session ain't going to work. I see that, you, man, post on your stories that where it's like, up, yo, bro. I weren't feeling it today. So yeah, we're definitely going to go train. Just turn up, bro. And I'm like, I rate that because only people who actually are actually doing anything understand that you have so many days that are not great. Mm. But you do it anyway. More days that aren't than are. Yeah, for I real. Think. <laughs> yeah. Bro, that's just discipline. Bro. <laughs> like, bro, like, <laughs> bro. But the, the, the same way that I eat breakfast is the same way that I wake up and I'm just fucking. I'm running or I'm in the gym or I'm like conditioning or like I'm just doing something or I'm stretching at night time. It's the same way that I eat breakfast, bro. Lunch and dinner. It's all it is. You learn. You know what it is. You learn to love the hard days in a in a in a twisted way. Like it's still hard, so it's like uncomfortable, but. The way your mindset is different in regards to it, I think that comes from growth and time. Do you know what I mean? Like the same way you're like, oh man, them days where it's like, I don't want to do it. Now you've got a mindset shift of this day is still important. Mm-hmm. This day is just as important or more important than the days when I want to do it. It is more important. Do you know what I mean? Like I used to hate practicing. Like, to be honest, I used to just love games. Now, I have more anxiety going into games if I haven't practiced because I know I'm not prepared. Mm -hmm. I love practice because now I get to go into situations with a certain level of confidence that even if I'm playing terrible, there's a chance that I'm probably still going to come out well. Because of the repetition. Because of the repetition. If I know I ain't put no repetitions in, it's really a, a free for all. Anything could happen. And I just don't like putting myself in that position in life, in anything, even with modeling, like, practice your poses, like know about the client, the type of clothes they are, how you want it to look. Because there's no mirror in there. You don't know what you look like until the photos have been taken. Do you know what I mean? It's like- And I always look good in the mirror, bro. But when people take photos of me, I look trash. You don't know your poses on that, bro. You know what I mean? It's just, but it's like, it's putting in that work of just feeling confident in yourself. And as we all know, you can just tell when someone's confident. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like they could be wearing the maddest outfit ever. If they're a little bit timid, rocking it, you're like, ah, oh, no, I don't rate it. But if they're confident, it can be like, you know what? That might not be for me. I hear it though. Just because you know it's for you. I respect that. Mm. You get me? It's and like it's, an aura thing in it. It's like it reaps So the, the quote goes, one of my favorite quotes, man. Confidence isn't, what was it? It's, um, <laughs> no, 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 no,
Confidence is having an undeniable stack of proof that you are who you say you are. I've read work that. yourself out. I've read that book somewhere. What book was it? Uh, it wasn't nah, it's Alex Hormozzi, bro. That's the fucking quote. He's there with the long hair. He's sick, He's the you know? fucking guy. He's so sick. sick. I watch him on YouTube. I'll He's work yourself sick. out, bro. Yeah, 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 and it's like, I, 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 I fucking, bro, I, I walk with a strut and I walk into a room and I know that, I'm not going to pretend that I'm like, I'm that fucking guy, bro, but I know that what I'm preaching and what I say and what I do is, it's me, bro. Calculated confidence. Fired up, yeah. I love it. I like it. I love, it. I love the fucking grind, bro. <laughs> I actually do, man. It makes me happy. That's why you go far, bro, because a lot of people run from the grind. They run from the hard days, but they, they want the results. It's like, what? It's it's the day and age that we live in because people only really showed the good times. Yeah, that's what you see. Yeah, and then they have a shock when they're like, hold on. What? What? Like, I didn't know this was a part of the process. No, it is a part of the process. They just didn't show it. That's what we, I mean, I mean, especially me, but we try to be like as on a level as we can be to, to try and like get that relatability thing again, but to show like, bro, my whole family's been in Cyprus for the last three and a half weeks. Mm. I've been at the desk every day. Mm. And I've been in the gym. Like, I can show that mm. and be open about it because I know I'll, I'll look back in a couple of years and I'll be like, you know what? That was a sacrifice I made for this, whatever. I don't want to go to the gym. We talk about we've had a bad month in the business. We're like, okay. to try and show that the journey, like, because we thought, bro, it was going to be, oh, First month we did this. Yo, next month we'll double it. Next month, bro. <laughs> Trust me. Month yeah. three, bro. We were doing a third of what we did on month one. It's mad, isn't it? It's like shit. Well, it, it goes. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying, Like though? I said, I'm back to the yeah. bottom, bro. Yeah, bro. Mm. To the bottom, bro. Mm. To the bottom where nothing is coming in to the point like, and Chris, H, hey, can we pay ourselves this month? And things are still going out. Yeah, bro. Can we pay like, ourselves this month? It's a part of it, though. But do you know what it is? Being transparent. And trying and showing the people that buy into us and listen to us that that's part of the journey as mm. we're understanding it as well along because we didn't know we're just finding it out now. It's like walking in the dark. With bro, your I'm hands out. the fuck up by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking. Do you know ready, what I mean man. though? Like, yeah. bro, like there's a beautiful thing in that of being like, yo, guys, like it's okay not to be okay because guess what? Seventy five percent of the time we're probably not, but we still show up. Mm. We still fucking people, show up. People are scared to show up, bro. People are scared to. Let's be scared of that. That's the yeah. thing. The hardest part is showing up. Like we used to have this phrase, like, like bro, our practices in the States was hell, man. I'm talking, cause we'd be in practice and guys would like pass out, run in and just pass out in the hospital a couple of days, IV drip. You're thinking, bro, what? We used to walk around with a gallon of water, bro. You had to drink it in six hours just so you had that level of confidence of I'm hydrated if coach throws anything at me. Do you know what I mean? This and coach you, sounds like a bit of a dick, bro. I can't oh, it's like. a mad thing. <laughs> but like, I've met a couple of coaches that are wild, but like now I can play for anyone yeah. because I've been through it. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But it just comes down to, bro, after like a litre and a half, you're hydrated. But well, we used to drink that gallon because like, it's like, I'm so hydrated. I'm not ending up on an IV drip. I'm not passing out in practice. It just comes from confidence. You get me? And like our, co our assistant coaches used to be like, guys, we know it's mad. Just show up. The hardest part is just showing up. Once you're there, you're already in it. You're already in the fight. You just got to survive now. Do you know what I mean? And some days it's surviving. Some days it's thriving. But it's 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 not up for debate if you don't show up. Do you know what I mean? And that's where you really um get better. So It's like the video that The Rock put on his gram the other day. Well, it was probably like a month ago. I know it's slightly different, but it's, it's such like a simple video. But it's, you put that video on, it was just like... Day one. No, the quote goes like this. One day or day one. Bro. Like, Swear that, that's what it fucking is, bro. Mm. George Heaton talks like that. I, I rate George. You know bro, George from represent? Yeah, bro. He's that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I talk to him on Twitter sometimes. And I'm just like, some of the stuff he posts, I'm like, you're on your mission, you. I rate that's it. it. That's his slogan, bro. Yeah, no, I'm mission. like, I rate it. Because there's one thing having nothing and being on the grind. And then there's one thing having everything and still being on the grind. Yeah, like you've got nothing. One, th one thing that I aspire... Oh is like one thing that I aspire to have. I'd, I'd, I'm not like crazy for like fame or anything like that, but the way that he can inspire a group of people, mm. bro, like that is bro, that motherfucker got us out of bed, bro. bro. That motherfucker got us out of bed at six in the morning, bro, to go and train first. Why? He's got everything and more of what we want. What's the first thing he does in the morning? Wakes up before everyone else and guess what? Goes and gets a fucking sweat on. 
shit, that means well, we've got to do something similar. He's a multi-millionaire. He really doesn't have to. He doesn't have to, bro. He really, really doesn't have to. He doesn't really even have to be in his office. The people day. that are in his situations are coming back from the after parties at five in the morning. Fair but enough. he's getting up and he's going to work. And, the and is, showing showing the fuck up, bro. If you if you wanna if you work hard, no, if you play hard, you should also work hard. So like there's been times I've come in at five in the morning, but like there's like for me it's being like the non negotiables with yourself. Do you know what I mean? What like are your non negotiables. Uh do what I said I was gonna do. Doesn't matter what it is. So like if if I wake if like the thing is as well, you know when you know when you're fresh, you're feeling good, and you're like, it's, it might be like Monday, yeah, yeah feeling yeah. fresh. Today's and it's this like week's a good week, yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. like Wednesday. I'm gonna go work out at six a.m. because right now you're fresh and you feel good. You've worked out Monday. You wake up sore Tuesday. You train Tuesday. Fucked for Wednesday. Now <laughs> it's time to go bed Tuesday night. You're thinking, bro, I need a day off. Then it's. Oh yeah, I said I was gonna go for a run at six a.m. Now, no one told you to say that. You made a contract with yourself, <laughs> and you're yeah, a bitch man. if you, you don't get me. It. <laughs> one thing I won't be doing is negotiating with myself. Yeah. If I said I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it because that keeps me in line. You know what I mean? So that is one of my non-negotiables. Don't like. You can't don't. you can't negotiate with that in a bitch, bro. Yeah, don't For negotiate, real, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, you you just, like we're on, we're, we're, like we're on, we're on. And you see what it is with that is as well. If you don't negotiate with yourself and you know you're serious, the people around you eh. also know they can't take you for some joke, man. Mm. Because you take you serious, so they have to, or you can fuck them off, and they can they can't even be like, bro, you said you was gonna work out at six a.m. You've said bare stuff and you ain't done it, but yet you want to hold me accountable for not doing stuff. Now, if it's, I said I was going to do boom, 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 and then I do boom, boom, boom. You're damn right. I have, like, I'm going to hold you accountable when you say you're going to do something because if you're not serious, I don't want you in my circle or what we're on. Do you know what I mean? So I think for me, that non-negotiable, but boy, there's been times I've had to be like, Colf, before we agree... <laughs> With ourselves, <laughs> let's just think, okay, Friday, it's Monday now. Let's just take into consideration how we might potentially A lot can feel. change. You get me? A lot can change. <laughs> and if and if we still decide 6 a.m. we're going for this run, no matter what might be going on throughout the rest of that day, let's just know. And then if I decide, it is what it is. There's nothing worse than than having that alarm go off in the morning. Bro, like you, bro you hit snooze. It's like, you've already lost the day. Man. I never snooze. That's another negotiable. I get up immediately. It's actually very bad for you to snooze as well. Yeah. Scientifically. Yeah, yeah, you enter your deep sleep again and it oh, fucks so. up like, your whole so sleep. So once you then. press that snooze, your snooze button should be around nine minutes, something like that. That's like what average you people are. like 20 minutes or 30. They, some people, they don't even press snooze. They press off. And then they've got another alarm set 30 oh, minutes no. and another one. And I, I'm like, I, I, I turn the snooze button off. It's like, if I don't press it, shit, like, I guess I'm the bitch. Yeah, I, just, I just get off. I'm like, why have you got eight alarms all in the space of 20 minutes? 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, if anything, that would piss me off. Yeah, yeah. bad. I might as well get up. You know, we used to have practice at, um, I think it was like 4 a.m., 5 a.m. And bro, for that coach. So yeah, when you turn up, you need to be awake because you can't be in there yawning. So as soon as my alarm, my alarm used to go off at like three something, I used to wake up, I'm having cereal, I'd have like water, Red Bull or a muffin and I'm watching NBA clips or basketball clips, listening to music so that when I show up for practice, I'm ready to go because if we have a bad practice, we'll be back again at 2 p.m. after a full day of school. So I'm like, I'm going to be raring to go. I'm not going to be in there yawning and tired because I've got to be here and if I fuck around, I'm going to be back later on too. And the last thing you want to do is put that snooze and show up to practice late. I would rather run in front of a car. How do you train, bro? What's training like? In terms of like individuals or like team stuff? Just in general, bro. You don't, you don't like, mean, bro, how do you train now? You don't show anything, do you? We've actually thinking of it. No, actually you say you work it. out three, four days, three, four hours a day, bro, but. Because yeah. I used to post everything, but now I'm like, got no interest in, in like, people's like I don't care people rate it for people to be like oh yeah you're doing your thing or yeah I see the grind 
No, I I know the grind. Do you know what I mean? Like, I kind of went I went through a stage because I saw something. It's like you only post things on your social media that aren't normal to you. Mm. I've been training since I was thirteen, bro. I was like, like I, I went through like it was a, like probably a month, two months. Shit, bro. I just didn't post nothing. Mad, bro. bro. It's true though, bro. You go on a private jet for the first time. You're gonna bang that fucking jet on your story. Yeah, what if it's just normal? Mm. Like, like the only thing I posted the other day. Like I've been working out consistently for ages. The only thing I posted workout wise was um, my fifty five inch box jump that I did the other day, because Crazy. I just because I was just like you know what I'll, I'll, be, wait, I'll, I'll, be, I'll beat you in a header fifty five yeah impossible <laughs> 50, no, I'll beat you in the header bro fifty five inches is, I think it's about five foot four five foot five it's crazy so yeah like I could jump on a five foot person's head and stand up that's oh, so a Kristen. <laughs> as soon as he started going down that no, it's because I saw Luke laugh at you before Luke never laughed anything yeah, I was looking was, at Luke he was looking down on that. <laughs> no, fuck all of you lot <laughs> so yeah but you know only reason I posted that was on that same day I got a memory and it said six or it said six or seven years ago um, it was a something about my hip because obviously Facebook memories and it mm. came up about oh, my second hip surgery or something and I looked at it and I was just like, I'm just thankful that I, like all I've done in that time since I made that Facebook post to now is mad. And I was like, let me see if I can still do it. And then boom, yeah, 55 inch box jump, which is high. And I was just like, and I feel the best I've felt. How is the hip now? No. Amazing. Like fine. Like I Like no one knows about my hip. Like all these teams, players, nothing. Because I always said, I don't want them to be like, oh, Kofi's a good player. He's a killer for having one hip. Nah, bro. I'm a killer. Period. <laughs> That's it. Do you know what I mean? I don't want no exceptions or this, that, and the other. Nah. Either I can handle it or I can't because no one really cares. Do you have like anything like a metal hip put in or anything? Nah, I've like got or sutures just- and like screws. You know, there's actually like a, a science behind if you, so let's say you injure yourself, your hip, for instance. There's a science behind if you think that your your body can heal itself and it's going to be better, mm. you have more chances of actually healing. Swear down. Yeah, bro. It's like crazy. A it's, it's probably what, huh? Like a manifestation of your body healing. I, I, I don't your know like the exact one. science behind it, but your body will heal better. Like if, if I was ill and I kept telling myself I was ill, I, I'm, I'll probably stay ill for longer. But then That's if like I wake Andrew up and Tate, I'm like. It? Andrew yeah, Tate, he's like, it's not, I'm not saying depression isn't real. I'm just saying I can't be depressed. Mm-hmm. Therefore, I can't be something I don't believe is real. The way he mm. breaks it down, bro, is like, very reasonable. Like, it is reasonable. Like fair? Yeah. Obviously, I, I can't that. really put myself in the shoes of anybody that's been depressed because I don't think I've ever been there. But like, the way that he just broke it down and was like, if I tell myself I'm not depressed, I'm not. Yeah, you technically can't be. So yeah. how? Bro, if, if, if you wake up one day and you're not feeling good, if you stay in that same that's mindset of... That's the thing, no, with yeah. mental health, yeah. It's just a spectrum. Like, I hate how I'm a part of trying to change that, that stigma of mental health's just bad. But when they think of bad, it's suicidal and depression and the worst. all that. Yeah, the worst. Where I'm like, yo, if I said to you, oh, how are you feeling? And it's like, ah, man, I ain't had a great couple of days. I'm just not feeling like myself. You're still fine. You're still functional. Mm-hmm. That's still just, get up and, that's and just do shit. On, that's just on the spectrum of mental health. When you're feeling gassed and over the moon, you're just on the positive side. Yeah. You're feeling down and low. You're just more on the negative side. If you know there's a scale, we can work on moving you. But if you only think it's an end destination, you're actually fucked. Because if you're not stressed and depressed, what are you? Nothing. But it's like, no, bro. Like, there's times you've been happy and life's been good. What was you doing that had you at that... Half these people I talk to, I'm like, oh, they're like, oh man, life stress and this, that, and the other. I'm like, oh, okay, so um, that's just life. Though, I'm bro. like, so like, how many meals a day in the last week? How many meals a day do you eat? Like, oh, probably like once. How many like do you drink coffee? Yeah, like eight to ten cups. All right, cool. Bro, do you drink coffee. water? Uh, nah, not really. What do you have with your food? Fizzy drinks. What type of food do you eat? Fast food. Have you ever got, have, like, when's the last time you went for a walk? Haven't. I stay on the screen all day. Walks, so bro. I'm like, bro, you don't need to go to the doctors and get pills. You need a, treadmill, a, a liter of water, <laughs> no treadmill, coffee, bro. eight hours sleep, go to the gym and go for a walk and do that for a week and let me, tell me how you feel. That's one thing. A lot of people have done that. They're like, yo, I feel great. 
Bro, people underestimate the power of walking, bro. Just bro, going outside, bro. No, no headphones, bro. Taking in nature, the noises. There's so much authenticity in it's that, man. Birds, feels, yeah, man. Bro, I really like... I, this, this might sound a bit like sad, but like when I go out <laughs> on my walks on my own, like I take in everything, bro. Like every I'm single sound. I don't know, bro. Like I, I don't really know no one that does it too much. So? I do it. What do you mean? No, you walk with headphones. I, I, yeah, occasionally. I, 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 I've, I've even got in the ha- habits of like running without headphones now. Like... I just I don't know. I've stopped. I've stopped um, walking with headphones now. It's nice because I used to walk, and obviously, like half the time, I'm listening to music that's just instrumentals, or I listen to classical because it helps age like creativity. Mm-hmm. Um, but now, sometimes when I go for my walk, sometimes I want to hear the trees, want to hear the birds. Like I like to go for walks away from. Yeah, 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 I'm not yeah. trying to hear police sirens. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It doesn't aid. But when I just hear the birds, or I just like see. Docks or whatever. I'm just like just jump in into the sky, bro. And it's yeah, nice. bro. Yeah, like yeah. half the time, I'll just walk on grass and um take my shoes and socks off. Earth and grounding. Yeah, yeah grounding. grounding. Because I lived in Colorado, and I used to think them kids were weird. I'm on campus. Bear in mind, we're in the mountains. I'm seeing these kids take off their shoes and socks to walk on the grass, but then they put the shoes and socks on to walk in the building. I'm thinking, yo, what go on for you, <laughs> lad? Do you know? Do you know the science behind it? Isn't huh? it like the electricity and like yeah, yeah, the earth? Yeah, yeah. Once Obviously, I learned about all that. Sold, bro. It's it's, it's so crazy, bro. Like how, like from thousands of years ago. Obviously, it's the Earth's magnetic pool, mm-hmm. and obviously we've like well electromagnetic pool. And we've got magnesium, potassium, um, sodium in us. So obviously that like just helps to re- release endorphins and, and hormones, bro. For healing, making you happier, a healthy human. Hugging it's so tree, crazy, bro. bro. I've, I've got a photo of him from when we were like probably 17 like we went on a walk and i was like hug that tree man like bare laughing at him it's, it's actually just- a thing though like bro like there's science that actually supports like if you hug a tree bro like what it would do for you like bro the thing is, he hugged the tree and make the tree look small. <laughs> I have a problem with I that. I can't get my arms around one me. Bro, like, like you know what it is? Life's so, like, fast-paced and it's just going a certain way where it's like we're getting further and further away from nature and I'm just like, sometimes I just need peace, bro. Like, if you've ever been around, like, you've ever got, like, been around ducks. Like, I like, I love swans, one of my favourite animals. I'll go to, like, a park and then by my park there's like two swans chilling i'm going on my peace walk because i'm so stressed because i'm doing 85 different things if i don't write everything in my notes i forget life's so hustle and bustle and then i just sit there and i'm like oh i need to relax i'm just watching this one do nothing and i'm like you probably do that all day yeah do you envious of that I actually, this is a thought that i actually have you know when you sometimes you look at an animal and you think your life is so simple so we think Bro, it's completely different. So you watch bro, David Attenborough bro. and they uh, flip him. Yeah, no, no. Bro, I'm not talking about the wa- the ones that yeah, are... Bro, so cause even the, the, I'm like, talking yeah. about your cat or your dog or something like that. Motherfucker gets fed, goes to sleep, gets a patted belly, goes out on a walk, does his thing, chills all day, but that's it. That's different, but he's still... he can. Your dog can still be sad, though, because he's feeding off your emotions. Like, a, a dog can smell that well that it actually smells like what hormones you're releasing and can understand whether you're sad or happy. I'm never jealous of an animal like that, no. Because I, I love, I love animals, and like I'm watching it, and I'm like, people are like, ah, oh, yeah, I want to be a lion, this, that, and the other, and I'm like, they, they, like all they do is like try and survive and eat, and they fail. Fascinating. A though. lot more times than they, than they succeed. Mm-hmm. You want to, and you talk about pressure. That's pressure. If you don't kill what you hunt, you die. Also. When you do have kids, like let's say it's like a female lion and she has cubs, man, them are trying to kill your children immediately. Yeah. Very, very cutthroat in terms of the circle of life. So mm-hmm. I'm like, we're over here stressed, this, that, and the other. In comparison, no one's really trying to, like if I had kids, no one is trying to kill them. <laughs> yeah. And I can go to Tesco and get food. So we all right. Not, oh, if I don't catch that deer, I starve. Because if I don't catch that deer, I get more and more hungry with less and less energy, which makes it even harder to catch the next one. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. not like think shit's rolling. Do you know what I mean? So I'm like... Imagine being an animal in the wild, bro, and you have to fend for yourself against like a fucking bear. Bro, and you're that's like two crazy years old, yeah, and then you're like, like, like mountain lions or whatever. Just survival of the fittest. As soon as they, their child becomes like one, the mom just walks off, never to be seen again. 
These solitary animals, they're just alone until they mate. There's this bird. Have you have you watched the new David Attenborough, Our Planet on Netflix, the new, uh, yeah. new series? Bro, you know that I can't remember what the bird was called, but like from like as soon as it hatches, it meets his mom in like uh, the ocean, and then it, it swims like seventy k from like hours after it's born. Do you know I how think, to start? We saw the little turtles. The little turtles. I think that, yeah, yeah the, 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 the ones they have to go and then they come back once yeah. they're ready to mate. Yeah, Bro, yeah, the yeah. little turtles. They just they're just not alive in that egg. Then they're birthed yeah, yeah. and they're just like and okay, like, and then they've got to do and like they and got to do like <laughs> a mile walk, and you're like twenty minutes old. You got to do a mile a mile walk to the ocean. <laughs> Everything's trying to eat you, destroy you. Even if you die, they fall in between trees and logs. You know, they just the, stop. They die. What's it called? Green light. You know that one. And they're all trying to get to the finish line. Yeah, bro, and the ones that keep stepping, it's like bop bop bop. Do you know the uh, picked off? <laughs> That, that's Squid Game, that is. Yeah, Fucking yeah. Hell. That's nice. old. It's mad, bro. Like, um, nah, don't the, the, I saw the craziest video. I showed it to you the other day, man. There's this, it's, it's this bear, bro, and it catches a salmon. The, the salmon's still alive, and it rips its skin off, bro, and the salmon's still alive, bro, and it's ripped its whole skin off. Savage. Like, Fucked. think about it. Like, imagine you're the salmon. It's great thinking about it if you're the bear. <laughs> <laughs> bro, bears, think are, of, bre- bear, bears aren't him, though, bro. Like, bears yeah, are those but, like, fucking Yeah, but, like, imagine guys. you're the yeah, salmon. that bear was him, bro. That bear was like him. imagine you're the salmon though, like you're out offending for your life too. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And now it's just peak. It's not like it was a quick death. Come in slow. Yeah. So when you deep it, I don't know. No, I'm seeing these videos around. of like, bro, the other day the zebra and it's cut up and it's like intestines are falling oh, out and it's trying to walk, bro. Like and crazy. it's just gonna bleed out, but I it's still trying to go. Mountain lion in Colorado. I Did you fuck off, bro? Yeah, bro. I've had bare animals I've almost tried to yeah, kill I was gonna me. say, there was a runner in, a, in America and he was running and a, a mountain lion and jumped And he kept following him and he's going. <laughs> yeah, I saw that, bro. Yeah, bro I came face to face with it, What bro. happened? Bro, so. Shit. What, what are we doing? Like, this, is its own, this is his own YouTube <laughs> clip in itself, bro. Mind, just yeah. bring it back in <laughs> again. So, so, so like in Colorado, bro, it's, unless you're in Denver, like I was in like a small town in Colorado. So it's literally the mountains that they built a town in the mountains. So I'm talking on campus, it's their signs, yo, mountain lion sighting. You'll have your trash cans outside your apartment and it'll be, yo, make sure it's shot, tied tight, bears. Thinking, yeah, I remember I'm coming from <laughs> where I'm like, well, whatever, bro. Bro, I'm <laughs> Mom chilling. Was chilling in Aston, bro. Bro, <laughs> bro, bro <laughs> late night, yeah, i have coming back from like, like, I think I was shooting or whatever. Bear in mind, these animals only come out late at night when campus is empty. I've come out. I'm hearing rustling. I'm thinking, what's that? Bro, there was oh, a brown... That, no, I think it was like a black bear or brown bear. I was like... That's the what? one animal you don't want to see, bro. I'm off. I'm like, nah, fuck that. But bear in mind, <laughs> on campus, there's trees and apples and everything. Yeah, yeah, we've yeah. got we've got deer on campus all the time. That's chilling. They're not shook of us because from when they're born, they see us. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So their parents aren't shook. I'm just like, oh, there's... Open my window. Seeing them right there. It's just bear mountains. There's a deer eating. It just looks at me, carries on about its business. Even I'm not bothered because I see him all the time. Bear in mind, so <clears throat> in the mountains, like I love a sunset. And remember, I'm in Colorado, I'm not in Aston. Like even here, the skyline looks yeah. great. It's buildings. You get me? Out there, it's just nature. So I'm like, yeah. I'm a, a, bear in mind, I've come through my hip surgeries and I, I'm just like, just more appreciative of life. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I just yeah. want to take everything in. So I'm like, ooh. I want to go up into the mountains. I want to see the sunset, but from like a good, nice view. Because we used to go hiking all the time. We used to be like 10,000 feet, 13,000 feet, all that. But it's long going up or coming down. So I'm like, all right, cool. Summertime, I'm like, I want to see the sunset. <sighs> so everyone's like, oh, don't go. Like, you know, it's quite dangerous. Like you can go into the mountains when the sun's high because a lot of predators aren't on the internet. Sunset is like when it's time to get going. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, what? I ain't trying to hear that. So I've took my friend's dog. She's got a miniature husky. It's not even like a full size one, a miniature one. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. used to like walk her dog on that on campus. And um, so I'm like, all right, cool. Everyone's like, what about mountain lions? Because it's not like you're in the mountains and it's like a path. It's the it's real mountains. Like there's animals and like shit out there. I'm like, nah, I'll be calm. So I've gone to the kitchen, I've got a blade. So I've grabbed a knife, big one. I'm like, cool, I'm going with this. Then I've grabbed a small one, put it in my backpack. So I'm like, I've got my headphones and I've got a dog. So I'm like, when I'm out there, 
even if I haven't got headphones or something, I'm not going to see a mountain lion, really. Coda's going to smell it way before I'm even aware. By the time I would know it's there, it's too late. Bear in mind, these big, these big cats, they attack from behind. So I'm not going to see it until it's, you know what I mean? So I'm like, oh, it's calm. That's why I'm going with the dog because I'm like, the dog's going to smell it immediately. And like, when he's alert, I'll be alert. So I'm walking, bro, I'm walking and there's a video, yeah. I'm like, I don't know, like an hour and a half, two hours, like away from like campus. I cannot see campus no more because I'm walking. I can see cars, buildings, walking, walking, walking. It's getting a little bit like smaller. Walking, 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 just enjoying. I'm rapping, listening to music. Look, everything's gone. I'm like, raw. But then I've got Koda. Koda's looking at me. I'm like, yo, me and you. <laughs> <Bless."> <laughs> <laughs> I'm walking. I go on Snap. I'm like, obviously, every, everyone said to me about mountain lions. I'm like, yo, if I see a mountain lion, it doesn't want to see me. Mm. <laughs> you get me? I'm, <laughs> I'm young, innit? I'm, I'm young. So I'm walking. After a while, Koda starts going mad. Koda, like, so I mean, there's a path in the middle. Then up this side of the mountain is like, trees and whatever this side of the mountain it dips down but it's super long grass like green grass it's summertime so i'm walking i'm like cool colder's like sniffing i'm like what's wrong with you a deer has like ran up the side of the mountain so i'm like at first i'm scared because i've just started chatting shit on snap you get me and i posted it <laughs> it's like you, manifested you get me it, so yeah. i'm like <laughs> remember there's no one around bro so i've gone from yeah i'm cool i'm calm here an animal <laughs> I'm like Kobe, calm because i'm too far from campus now where i can like run back if anything happens i need to handle it now like that runner he went was he i was just gonna run back to the city from a mountain lion yeah, and they yeah. love to chase now nah, bro you've got to do what you gotta do i've got the big knife i'm like cool Kobe, calm down relax we're here for a mission I'm like George Eaton. I'm on a mission. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, as soon as he said it, that's where my head went. time to work. <laughs> that's where my head went yeah. straight away. So I'm walking, bro. Colder's then started going nuts now. Colder's the, the husky. He started like, he's a miniature husky and he like, he's very obedient. He's like sniffing, but he's like trying to go in the bushes now. I'm like, yo. To the long grass. Yeah. So I'm like, yo, I pulled him. He's not listening. I'm thinking, huh? I've yanked him now. He's looked at me, fobbed me off. And gone straight back for the bushes. I'm thinking there must be something in there. Something I need to be aware of. Because <laughs> I'm not going to keep walking and be like, yeah, yeah, behind me in the bushes. There's something there. Don't know what it is. I'm calm. <laughs> it's behind me though. Nah, forget that. So I've like, I've leaned in with the grass. Bear in mind, i got a big blade, kitchen knife. I've leaned into the grass. And I'm kind of like, the grass is like bright green. I've got the knife. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm semi, I'm not trembling because I'm like, I don't think there's anything in there. And if anything... Just being All wary. I've been seeing is deer. Yeah. It's probably a deer just chilling, cold as a dog. I've leaned in, but now I'm like leaning over the side of like the mountain. Leaning with a knife, I've moved the grass. I'm thinking, what's that? That's brown. I'm thinking, huh? Bear in mind, I'm on one leg leaning. I'm thinking, nah, surely not. Deers are brown too. Try not to, just relax. So I'm like, nah, it can't be. I put my headphones now, because I had them on, I put my headphones like here, like my beats. So they're not fully on my head. So I've like leaned and I've like, nah, let me go in. So I've gone, I've took a step in, I've gone down closer. I've moved like the grass, bro. The head was like this big, bro. I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, what's that? But I'm looking at its eyes, bro. The eyes are like snooker balls, bro. Big, I'm thinking. Like, so we're, we're, we're caught eyes, yeah, bro. Yeah. So I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, my nah. body's froze. It's just looking at me. It's just like this, looking at me. I'm thinking, nah. Bro. But bear in mind, the head's like this big, bro. And it's just, it's not blinking. So I'm not blinking. And that means I'm not moving. So I'm just like, ah. Oh. Then Koda like snorts his nose. I go like, Phew, like a truffle or whatever. I jump back because now my brain's like, that's not a deer, bro. <laughs> Headphones drop right by the, um, by the path. I've backed up. I'm jumping around. I'm like, no way. I'm like, yo, yo. I'm like, come on, come on. Because what am I going to do? Be scared. Yeah, no, There's no one be out loud, here bro. to help bro, me. The like, noises yeah, yeah. that mountain lions make Do you know what I mean? Well and obviously I'm, I know it's like, because mountain lions are big and they're element of surprise because if they, they don't want to get injured. So that's why they're element of surprise because it's less risk for them because if they get injured or seriously damaged, they can't hunt anything else, especially if it gets away. So I'm jumping around, but I'm also trying to geek myself up because 
I'm like two miles away from, from people. My phone, I've got no service out here. You get me? Now it's me, a miniature husky, and a mountain lion. Bro, it's came out on the path. I'm thinking, oh my God. I still got the blade. <laughs> Hell yeah, I still got the blade. The blade is that a big kitchen knife now. I've got the blade, <laughs> but I'm like, I'm trembling. Bro, it's come out on the path. Koda is like next to me on the side. I swear to God. What's the dog saying, bro? Bro, the dog. Crazy. Remember, huh? he hasn't seen what's in there. He can smell it. So he was wilding out. Koda's next to me. The mountain lions come out. Bear in mind, female mountain lions, male mountain lions are two different sizes, bro. Also, you see when we see like Rottweilers and like cane corsos and these big dogs, we're like, raw. Big boy. That's big. Yeah. Until you go to the zoo and like the zookeeper's walking a cheetah. And you're like, raw. So you're telling me it's bodies from that sofa to that TV. <laughs> yeah. How big are these these cats? And then you're thinking, hold on. So then, how big's a lion? And you're like, yo, these animals actually are built to survive out there. Do you know what I mean? So I'm looking at it. It's a male because I could just see how big it is, and you can tell it's been eaten well because it's got a beautiful coat, shoulders massive, paws huge, forearms huge. Even the tail's like this big, What's bro. What's it doing? Is it stalking bro, no, you? Like, it's what's just, it doing? It's come out on the path now because obviously I've seen it. Yeah. So it's come out calm. I don't think it was hunting because obviously it would have been on stuff. It's come out, bro. It's come out on the path. It's just looking at me. I'm just looking at it thinking, you can't I actually your don't know how to bro. deep this because I was chatting shit to everyone. I was chatting shit. My <laughs> girl's like, what are you going to do if a mountain lion attacks you? I'm like, what? I got a couple flickies. <laughs> One of us is coming off this mountain. Yeah. And if it's me, I am dragging it back to campus. And, yeah. and snap, I'm going to be- Snap story still saying, tap to try again to upload what? as well. <laughs> You're crazy. I'm uploading that. And you think, I said, you think I'm killing a mountain lion that tried to kill me and I'm not sending this picture back to the blood clot news. <laughs> This picture's going viral. It's going to be in a Birmingham mail. It's going to be everywhere. <laughs> I survived. Wait, what happened when it was on the path then? Bro, it's now looking at me. I don't know if you, man, have ever heard like a mountain lion bro, like the, roar or, like, sc or screech. Bro, that, or it's that. like, yeah, bro. I was just yeah, about to say. Bro, they, they come at you very fast, innit? Bro, <laughs> but this one, this time it didn't come at me. Great, bro, that was good, innit? The thing is, the thing yeah, is it's bro. different if it comes at you. When it's just standing there, I think that's looking more at scary. You, that's more scary because it's like a showdown. I'm looking at it. But then it's looking at me and I'm like standing big and I'm like, nah, not today. So I'm shouting. I'm like, come on then. I'm like, come on. <laughs> yeah, in my head, it was like, Colby, you either need to be like, come on then or run. If you run, it's going to chase yeah, you. Gonna catch you. You, you, you ain't dog. getting away. If you You're not run. getting away. So I'm like, I don't actually have two options. Yeah. What's the dog saying? Though, the, dog, the, real, the real two <laughs> options is throw Dash cold the dog. <laughs> Dash the dog. Or I defend both of us. There's no way I can come back to campus and say to my home girl, hey, by the way, <laughs> Your I dog, was calm. Your dog that's like your baby. <laughs> Sus. <laughs> you get me? I was like, I I'll can't get, do I'll that. You a new I'm one. not doing that. I refuse. So I'm making bear, bear noise. It's looking at me like, it's looking at me, but I can tell it knows I'm on stuff because I'm like, really, there's no other option. It's going to be me or you. I've got a blade. So I actually feel a lot more confident than being like, all right. I'm not doing that. So I got the knife and I'm like, I'm going straight for your neck. If that means you mess me up, you're going to be injured because you're going to bleed out and you're not doing no hunting. You're not doing nothing. You're going to die. Yeah. You're, you're going to just finish for you. I might be able to like do all right or both of us are going down or all three of us, whatever. <laughs> you get me? Bro, it's staring at me. It's making noises, but then it's looking at me and it's like, nah, this might be long. It's looking at Coda now. I'm thinking, huh? So Coda's then looked at it and it's look, Coda's looked at me. But like, the way he's looked at me is kind of like, you know, if like a toddler's scared. Yo, yeah, let's yeah, get yeah. out of here, bro. Like, <laughs> like, he's looked at me thinking, I did my part. <laughs> so you get me? So I've like stepped in front of Coda. Coda's like gone behind me, between my legs. And like, you know when a dog's scared because its, it's tail goes between its legs? Before his, his tail was up, especially Huskies, it's up. Yeah, yeah, tail yeah. right between his legs. I'm thinking, I'm feeling terrible. I'm like, yo, it's like if this was my child now, I'm making more noise, jumping around. It has not looked at me once. I'm making bare noise. I'm like, come on then, come on then. <laughs> Just staring at Koda. I'm thinking. <gasps> but the thing is, the dog is showing fear, which yeah. eggs on that I'm going to come get you then. Yeah, I know. And I'm thinking, 
what do I actually do here? Bro, I've like swiped with the knife. Kind of like, not close enough where I want to shank you, but close enough where- Warning. If you come close enough, I'm going to shank you. If you come close enough, I'm on stuff. Like yeah. we are going to get into it today. Bro, it's gone. It's like, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, it's poor. Bro, I've got, bro, scary, bro. bro, I've got Fuck. big hands, bro. I've got <laughs> big hands. I'm looking at its paws, bro. The paws are like this big, <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. It's like swiped. The nails have come out and it's hit the ground. This is like concrete with rocks. Do you know how hard it hit the, the ground, bro? The dust came up. I thought if I get boxed <laughs> by one of them, oh my God, it is over. Cold out. Soz. Not throwing your G. Bro. <laughs> then it's like, it's just like growling. I'm just like, but I don't know how long I was there for, bro. I felt, it felt like I was there forever. But obviously I wasn't. And then it's kind of like gone up. It's kind of like weighed. It's like just weighed out the situation. Just took its time with us, you know, just took its time. It's gone up into like the high ridge. And I, it's just looking. I'm like, I'm not going nowhere. I'm just keeping an eye on you. I was going to say, fuck turning then, your back. Bro, bro, bear in mind, the sun's going down. I'm close to like, where I want to go, bear in mind, I didn't know where I wanted to go. I was like, I'm just going to go for a walk. When I see a cliff, we're just going to go that way. Sit there, see it, come back. Bear in mind, All now I'm- for the sunrise. Bro, the just for the sunset. Now you know what I'm deep in. All I had was a phone light. The sun's going down, bro. So when it gets dark, after I've enjoyed the sunset, how am I getting <laughs> back? Because I'm so far, I'm not seeing the lights from the buildings and the houses. I'll just be walking in the dark, bro, with an iPhone like, now I'm thinking, I'm like, bro, I don't care if you've got a dog, you are a donut. <laughs> because even if that mountain lion situation didn't happen, would I even have been able to get back? I'd have been out, bear in mind, I've gone in a t-shirt and shorts. It's like 105 deg um, Fahrenheit in the States, in Colorado, yeah. it's bacon. So I would have either had to fend for myself all night with a little dog, no food. I had like a little bottle of water. And the flickies though. I had my, I had, I had, a, I had a mini, I had a mini flick yeah. and a big thing. So, I, but bear in mind, out there, bro, the only light you can see is coming from the moon. It's not like we've got actual visuals. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Now I'm thinking of your idiot. I've, so I'm walking like it started walking back towards like where like. Wait, the, so the you're, you're opposite now. Is it coming? Is it coming towards? No, you it's still? like it's after it's like swiped and all that. It's kind of like weighed it up. Like oh, I can't be asked. So it's like gone up the ridge, but the ridge ain't high. It's like twigs and stuff, like where the trees are like, it's not full bloom, so I can like see it. It hasn't gone up too high, but it's up there. And now it's just sitting there. And I'm like, you know what? Didn't even get to see the sunset, but I feel like this trip is now over. <laughs> There's no way I'm going to keep going further. No way. So I'm like, Koda, we're going back this way. So I start walking. It starts walking. Mm. I stop. It stops. I'm thinking, oh, bro. Shit. <sighs> Walking, you just hear him at the top of the mat. Bro, Colder's <laughs> just walking, looking at it. Colder's not even walking straight. He's just looking at it. So I'm walking, trying to keep on the path. I'm looking at it. It's there. Okay, walking. It's there. But bear in mind, it's like, not if I stop, it keeps walking. It stops, bro. So I'm like, what the hell? It's weighing you up, bro. Keep, yeah, I know, bro. It's like, yo, if I can get a quick one, I'll just kill him and the dog, bury him off in a tree, and I'll come back to him later. <laughs> so I'm like, I keep walking after like a while, probably like a mile, looking at it, looking at it. I can start to see like the town. So I'm like, oh, I'm not too far now. And then it's like a little dip down to the town. Walking, I can see it. Walking, I'm like, oh yeah, there's the town. Look, gone. Oh, I said, nah. <laughs> we I was like, all right, cool. Quick jog. We just started jogging. We went too far. We just jogged, bro. Didn't look back. Got down by, got down like right by like, not too far from like a car park. Because in Colorado, it'll just be like a warm up. There'll be a trail behind it straight into the mountains. Like it's literally everything just plopped in the mountains. I've got down right by the car park, looked up, saw the mountain line again. And I was like, I swear to God, when I looked just before we started that jog, it was not there. So they're made for man. Bro, I swear there's been mountain lion sightings like on our campus at, at the university. It's just crazy. been in a tree. You don't know. Cause who walks around looking up, just been in a That's tree, crazy. just, just people watching bro. Motherfucker was just stalking ah, bro, you down bro. I'm six foot six and it was, its body was probably my length and then at its tail. It was huge, bro. Um, if you're going to stand a chance against any type of lion, it is a mountain lion though. They're on smoke though. Bro, that, that runner that I was talking about, bro. That was a I, small bro, one. Yeah, look, yeah. I watched a video. No, it was no, a small no, one. No, bro, this one's not The one video. that's coming at it with his hand yeah, out. Yeah, no, 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 not that one. There's a guy, bro, who goes out running 
And a fucking mountain lion jumps on his back, bro, takes him down. The runner turns around and chokes the mountain lion to death. I, I read fucking, about that. It was a kitten. Was it? Oh, what was it? A baby it was. One? It was like an adolescent. It wasn't a fully grown one. Bro, but imagine that fucking- You're not choking one out, bro. <laughs> Just what the fuck a tap. You could probably <laughs> call an adolescent as he did, but- I, I this think, one, bro. No, you're gonna have a lot more damage, bro, bro. bro. That is crazy, though. Either way, that's this? like the bro. That's literally fight or flight, bro. That's life bro? or death. Oh my days, You're just lucky bro. that it won't a fucking. That's bear, a bro. sick fucking. You're, you're, story, uh, at least I had a GoPro on my head, bro. That's bro, amazing, at least, bro. <laughs> See, the thing is, is you're in that situation. These guys, bro, that the first thing they think of is like, okay, mountain lion, just wait there. They film it. No, the craziest. No, thing. Do you know? Wait. Do you know what though? You've story told this whole episode so brilliantly. Oh. No, no, let me just break it down for a second though. And everybody that's listening to this right now. Oh, like they were there. Bro, in my head, I'm you, bro. Oh, bro. I can see the ridge going down and the one going up. Bro. I saw the deer jump across, bro. Bro. And I can see that motherfucker doing that. Bro. Honestly, Sorry. hats off to you, bro. Anyone else in this yeah, room, bro? Yeah, yeah. You no, were there though, innit? Bro. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> I've, told this, I've told this story to people and I can see them being like, oh, and I'm like. Nah, he's practiced it. He's practiced No, I'm it. like, my face at oh, that time brother. wasn't Fuck's like it. that. Cause they're, cause they're like, oh, I was there. <gasps> what happened next? And I'm like, I didn't know what was gonna happen next when I was there, bro. Because like, you see when you're secluded, bro, no one's around. Mm. Bro, it's scary. Have you, have you heard about that show, Alone? It's on channel four, where they, it's for a hundred K. Um, you get plopped in like Canada or wherever, just rural, you're allowed like a knife and some flint. You gotta build your own like housing. You, Tent, you gotta fish, you gotta wash, you gotta do everything, you gotta survive. There's wolves, there's bears, there's mountain lions. The first thing they talk about, they're like, yo, there is no one around. That's when you actually feel lonely, like you feel so isolated. And I was like, I'm not just isolated. I like, I'm face to face with like, you was literally built to kill. It's literally the craziest built thing. to kill. And then here I am. Realistically, realistically, when you look at us humans, bro, we're pathetic compared to these fucking animals. Oh, bro, bro. pathetic, bro. I almost got, I got, I almost got drowned by some sea lions, bro. The fuck, bro. I have, I, I almost got drowned by dolphins as well. Not, not because these dolphins weren't like friendly ones. Well, these weren't like, like at an aquarium. <laughs> you know when like you're on holiday and you're on a catamaran and it's the the guide's like, ah oh, yo, there's the dolphins on the side, blah blah blah. Just go have a look. Hey, does anybody want to swim? Yeah. Bear in mind, I swam from my region, had almost like England trials. So I'm like, I can swim. Yeah. Boom, jumped off. Bro, you see when you're looking at them in the water from your boat, they look like this big. Nah. They're huge, bro. I'm in the water with goggles thinking, I'm underwater thinking, I'm thinking, what? I'm in your playground? Bro, humans in water, bro, they can Can't just flick anything, their bro. tail, we're upside down, spinning, nose up, water bar, <laughs> nose, we're all discombobulated. Mm. Bro, it swam <laughs> next to us so fast, bro. I was like, I swam to the side, I was like, get me out. Yeah, yeah. I was like, get me out, bro, Crazy, these bro. animals, bro. I think um I think I think that was a good time to wrap up, man. Me, bro. bro. This has without a doubt been one of my favorite pods, bro. I feel like we still got more to talk about as well, but I think we save it for another. I feel day, like there's man. gonna be a part two, man. This I'm is cool this was a banger. Bro. By then, hopefully, I've done more. As long as you're game. By then, bro, hopefully, I feel like you we still can got offer some more as well. Way bro. more to talk about, bro. Bro, I'm I just do a lot, bro. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I ain't talked about modeling, how I got into that, flipping shit. The amount of people with modeling now, like that, come to me for advice. A lot of them used to talk shit about me at this, that, and the other. I'm doing. Major campaigns, this, that, and the other. I've seen, bro. Like, I've seen you. You've done a lot of big things, bro. And obviously, hats off to you, bro. You sound like you've been through the shit, and you come out on top, bro. Just trying, bro. And that, that, that's all you got. That's all you can do, bro. Exactly, bro. Like, why not? Yeah. And and like I said, bro. Hats off to you, man. Appreciate not a lot of people have got it in it in them to just show up. By the sounds of it, you show up so every fucking day, bro. I just, bro. I literally just rock up. The amount of times I've just turned up to places and the thing is I'll rock up by myself. Mm. Like I don't need people to come. It's like when guys like go talk to girls and they're like, oh, there's one that I like, she's with a group. Come with me. Yeah, yeah, come <laughs> with me. I'm like, nah, if anything, you stay there. I'd, I'll do better alone with the group than with like all of us going there. And it's the same with like opportunity. Like if I find out there's an opportunity, like I used to just turn up at modeling agencies and during COVID and they used to be like, nah, no, we're, not, we're not looking at no one. We're not taking anyone in. I'm like, all right, cool. So what time do you guys finish? They're like five. I'm like, all right, cool. If you're not going to let me in, I'll just wait till you like, come out. Also, I'm like, you don't know what I look like. 
So I might be Tyson Beckford. You don't know. I might be a moneymaker for you. Ah, uh, you know what? We've had a little chat in the office. Come on in. Now I'm in there. Now it's up to me what I do from there. Yeah, well, it's personality, bro. It sells. Mm. It's not what well, it's not what you say to someone. It's not how you look. It's not it. it it's it's none of that stuff. It's how do you make them feel? Mm. And the person that you've just said to them, I might be your money maker. It's like, whoa, ain't no pretty boy ever spoke to me like that. Mm. You better let this motherfucker in. You, well, you know what? It is? You might <laughs> as well give him a chance. Let's yeah, just bro. See. Let's just yeah, well, yeah. From there, I'm open to the possibilities, and you might say you might be like, nah, fuck no, but at least. Like at least you're trying, no. bro. Yeah, you know what I mean. It is what it is, man. Yeah, man. Do you want to? Uh, Fucking bro, dope, I, 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 I really have enjoyed this episode, man. I appreciate Better, it. Thank you for jumping. Plug on. all your stuff, bro. Yeah, everything. Man. Plug everything. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Dejkoff, D E J K O A F. You can find my mental health page. Why not I M H O W H Y? I'll put all of it in the bio, bro. You, oh, yeah, you give yeah, me yeah, it, yeah. and I'll put everything. So yeah, I will, man. But yeah, man. If you guys like want to support the movement and like everything just please support man because everyone it, mental health is something that everyone has mm -hmm. do you know what i mean whether it's good or bad so we're in it together man and um yeah i'm just trying to lead from the front be an example oh um, man I like, well, bro. Um, keep doing what you're doing bro thank you for coming on as well man i appreciate for it real, bro. looking watched forward all, to part two already i've watched all you man's pods man have so you actually yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, we were I'll talking say, about yeah, the train yeah. one and all, all that yeah oh, thank you bro nah, for sure but um, listen, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for tuning in to another one of our episodes. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to join the top 1%, because we are in the top 1% of podcasts, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you get notified every time we post a podcast. We'll see you all next week. Peace. Peace. Love. Peace. Catch us later, man. No, that was good. I enjoyed that. That was that. dope.